Good evening, everybody, and welcome to D&D &D Time Delves. I'm going to be uh, dungeon mastering for you tonight. I am Pete, uh, and I'm really excited to get into our uh, dungeon crawl tonight. Uh, the uh, For one thing, the layout looks very nice, Jeremy. I see you've uh, I see you've made a couple changes to the old school Delves layout. I gotta yeah, say, I it's it's looking pretty. Delete the old one. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I think it looks pretty fresh. It's it's a uh, it's a good look. Uh, and um, yeah, we got wow. we got three players here tonight with us uh, who are going to be running through a really classic adventure uh, from old old school D and D called Against the Giants, or you know, a very small portion of that adventure. Um, so. Yeah, with, without further ado, let us uh, introduce our uh, let's introduce our players first. We got Crowley joining us tonight. Hi, Crowley. Hi. How you doing, man? I'm all right. How are you? Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good myself. Uh, I'm I'm really excited for this. This is gonna be the most like dungeony dungeon I've ever run before. Uh, so that's certainly something I've, I'm looking forward to. I've also never done like a module, so this will be uh this will be pretty cool for me. Uh, but. How are you is more important. How do you feel about going in on an artificer? For uh, anyone who's not aware, we're running a full artificer party tonight in order to kind of test out some of the mechanics and uh, see some of what they can do in action. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I've always liked the idea of the artificer. And I, I, as I said on on talks the other day, yes. I, I want to play an artificer in a, in a one shot, <laughs> which, uh, which is what we're doing here. And and here we are, as if uh, as if by prophecy. Um, also, uh, Jeremy, it's supposed to be a Y at the end of that title, not an I. Okay, oh. we'll fix that sooner or later. I'm gonna oh. be drawing a booger on this hill giant. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> um, you told me what this title was with words, but seeing it written out, it is completely incomprehensible. Yeah. Um, but well, I think we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, next up, we got you may someone you may know from D and D time. Probably, I would say, know from D and D time. We have Reflected Ten Eight, uh, better known as Lance Silverblood. He plays on our, our Friday games. Lance, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, Pete. Um. What about you? Have you ever like played an artificer before in like any other editions, or do you have any like history with it, or uh, how do you feel about the artificer on the whole? The artificer is one of those classes I've made a few of, and just have never really gotten in a game to play. I've DM'd for one artificer, which was a very interesting experience, and I am pretty excited to see what this new one is going to bring. Uh, I absolutely am as well. Oh my, Jeremy, that was a very efficient. That's a very nicely drawn booger. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, it, it came out pretty perfect. Uh, and of course, last but not least, you know him, you love him. Uh, my partner in crime here on D and D time. We have Jeremy. Hi, everybody. Jeremy, what about you? What, what's your art? What's your artificer? Fucking apparently, I'm like? a criminal. So thanks, Pete. Well, I am as well. Um, we committed, oh, right. uh, and also better. you committed the crime of hacking Roll20. I did not do this. <laughs> um, so, um, Jeremy, tell me. Uh, the artificer. Yeah. Uh, I like the Artificer. It's pretty good. It seems pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's too busted. We'll find out about that today. What about your thoughts on the Warforged? Oh, busted. <laughs> totally busted. Uh, yeah, and... Um, Jeremy is playing specific... Yeah, nice control race for this, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I, I really... Well, I knew, I knew that Lance was playing a high elf, and so I was... Actually, I didn't know that. I guessed that Lance would be playing an elf, a high elf, and I figured, I'll play... I'll pl I'm going to be the most busted example of what this can be. Um, so I, I think that's a great segue, Jeremy. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit, because the Artificer is a pretty complicated class uh, for anyone who tuned in to uh, our D&D &D Time Talks on Wednesday, uh, which I recommend watching if you're interested in the Artificer. We, uh, Myself, Jeremy Crowley, and Maddie Morks, uh, who I see in chat just there, hello, Maddie, uh, went over in quite a bit of detail a lot of our opinions and thoughts on it and talked about some of like the strengths and weaknesses of the class and um, just overall like thoughts on the design of it. Um, but it's a very intricate and really kind of complicated to play class. Um, there are, well, there's a lot of different ways you can build it. Uh, and I think we have three pretty unique artificer builds here. Um, so 
Jeremy, do you want to tell us a little bit about like what you put together for your kit? Yeah. So, um, my or you your character, your character on the whole too. Yeah, sure. We'll start with me. That's fine. I'm yeah. at the end of the list. But anyway, uh, yeah, I thought character... we'd go down and then back up. That's fair. Uh, my character is Juggernaut twenty seven point zero six B. Uh, I am playing a Warforged, uh, Project Code Immovable Object, and <laughs> yeah, I decided to really um, hone in on that uh, armor class potential that the Artificers got. So the Artificer has a ton of cool uh, variant like build options. You can build it a whole ton of different ways, and I really wanted to see just how crazy I could make this. And so that's where I'm currently at. Um, he's very hard to hit. <laughs> um, from what you were telling me about it, that is an understatement. Um, cool. I, I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, is do you go by Juggernaut? Do you go by V27.06B? What's your preferred nomenclature? Um, I don't think I don't think Juggernaut cares. Juggernaut, it is. Uh, um, uh, great, uh, Lance. What about you? What have you? Uh, what what character have you brought to the table? I've brought to the table Melshera Lindwa. And as for uh, the build I'm going, uh, this is the opposite of trying to min max any of the <laughs> good things that the artificer can kind of scope into because. You gotta get all these amazing spells, but but they also have crazy potential for AC. But but then then they can also punch with that extra attack, and there are just so many things. So I thought, let's do all of them. Uh, so you're going kind of like the well-rounded sort of utility route on um, Malashira, was it? Close enough. <laughs> give me one more time. I'll give it a fair. I'll give it a fair stab. Melshira. 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 We're gonna get we're gonna get it before the end of the night. I, I can assure you at least of this. Um so yeah, you're this kind of like very versatile, well rounded artificer that uh kind of do a little bit of everything. That's what I'm hoping for. Very well. We'll see how uh we'll see how she plays out. Uh and of course, last but not least, we have a name that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Uh Crowley, tell us about your character. Uh, his name is Hob Fakif. Um, Hob Fakif. Yeah, he's a, he's an artillerist as well, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm focusing more on uh, more on damage to an extent. I think I'm pretty general with like the spells and stuff I took, but like I took most of the weapon uh, infusions and have like three different weapons I can use with them, uh, and I'm going heavy crossbow. Like he well, he both heavy crossbow and heavily on crossbow. You've um, all in on the heavy crossbow weapon, and the, I've got a hand crossbow too. I mean, naturally, I, you, you gotta have. Uh, do you have one on each hand, or just the just the one hand crossbow? Uh, I have one hand crossbow, and I have a heavy crossbow, and I have a dagger. Um, so you're kind of a shoot boy. Yeah, I'm a sh <laughs> I'm a shoot boy. Uh. Excellent. I see range. that. Uh, and I see that now would be a great time to get in because it looks like there's a helpless civilian that's been trapped in this hill giant's belly button. He's desperately seeking aid. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be going uh, to the hill giant realm, so he may be stuck in there for quite a while yet. Um, as I mentioned before, this is uh, Against the Giants, which is a really old... Uh, you know, from advanced Dungeons and Dragons days, uh, adventure that was kind of remade with Tales of from the Yawning Portal, which came out you know a couple years ago now, uh, maybe three years was it now? It's been surprisingly long time, uh, and it comes in a lot of different parts. Where there's a section where there's a bunch of hill giants that uh, there's a dungeon based around hill giants, one around frost giants, and then one around fire giants, which is where our story is going to begin uh, today. Um, the three of you, uh, as artificers, are of course uh, member, uh, members of the kind of interdimensional council of artificery. Uh, and of course, this particular council, um, well, they do a lot of business with the fire giants in some places. You are probably well aware, uh, fire giants are 
renowned as excellent smiths. Uh, and they get a lot of important kind of metals and, and kind of forging materials. And for a long time, um, this particular kind of fire giant group uh, where you're kind of walking towards today, um, they have a uh, they have a fortress in uh, in Eberron is the particular plane that you're kind of walking into. Um, these fire giants have provided a lot of very high quality metal, uh, metals and materials, gemstones, things of this like, uh, for your artificer's guild. Uh, however, recently, uh, they've just kind of sh stopped completely sending any shipments of any materials at all, which puts them very much in breach of a contract uh, that your uh, your guild has with them. Uh, and in exchange for turning a blind eye to some of the wrongdoings that some of these fire giants may do, because they are not necessarily the kindest of uh, individuals, uh, well, you kind of have ignored a lot of that because they give you some great medals, but you're ignoring that no longer as they are in breach of that contract. The three of you have been sent there as kind of resolution agents uh, to see to it that you speak um, with their kind of designated leader. Uh, that's who your agency has had kind of dealings with in the past, a fire giant by the name of King Snur. Um, in the past, a, pr a pretty ruthless but pragmatic individual. Uh, you are you were pretty surprised to find out that he was no longer kind of uh, upholding this particular agreement. Um, so uh, where we officially begin, uh, the four of you find yourselves uh, walking en route uh, towards this massive fire giant fortress. Uh, and as you've been kind of walking down the road, uh, moving towards it, uh, you've been able to see it for a while now. It towers amongst everything else in the landscape. Uh, for starters, it's multiple stories, and each of those stories uh, is made for individuals of giant size. Uh, so even kind of, you know, nearby treetops, um, the, the tallest tree doesn't even seem to go quite up above what is like, looks to be like the entry floor of this, you know, mammoth structure that you can see in, in the distance. Uh, there's not a lot of windows. Um, it's made of what looks to be kind of a mixture of obsidian and stone uh, and you know, also, uh, you can see kind of like cracks in the stone where it appears there are um, kind of like little bits of like lava almost dripping, dripping out. Like some of the uh, the stone that's been used to build this fortress is like volcanic rock. Um, and yeah, uh, that is where our adventure begins. Uh, you are here to locate King Snur and either make sure that he starts sending materials your way again or deal with him because he is a menace to the area. Uh, and yeah, you're walking down a path uh, and the door is kind of looming close. Um, how are you walking to, to the, uh, I imagine the, the three of you don't know each other in particularly well uh, as you are just kind of work associates in this place. Juggernaut, are, are you the type to even, do you have many interpersonal relationships, Juggernaut? I have many friends. Oh, excellent. Uh, are the three of you friends here? Uh, what are you guys talking about it as you're kind of moving towards this location? Hmm. So what do you think will be in here? I mean, other than fire giants. I was going to project fire giants. Well, if the flow in lava is anything to go on, there's probably lava inside if it's spilling out. An apt tactical assessment. <laughs> um, and... Are you the commander of this mission? You know, I don't think any of us had a uh, rank assigned to us for this, but I do think commander is quite so. Very well. What say you, Hob? If you are volunteering to lead, you don't. And as you're kind of walking and speaking and, and getting a little bit closer uh, to the building, uh, you can see the front of this fortress now in a much kind of clearer view. Uh, it has two huge obsidian uh, kind of carved doors uh, on the otherwise kind of brutal and featureless outer exterior of this uh, of this place. Uh, you know, giants are in a lot of places known for their stonework, and particularly, you know, stone giants. Uh, and you assume they made this, but there wasn't a lot of passion put into it. It's just all kind of utility. Uh, and as you get closer, um, you hear 
an, incredi an incredibly loud voice uh, boom out. Uh, it's seemingly coming from all around you, um, but you in kind of get the idea that the source of it must be somewhere from within, uh, and the voice that you hear just kind of calls out, I've been expecting you. What brings you here now? I assume you are of the Council of Artificers. Well, what an astute observation. Indeed, I do believe there are certain contractual matters that we are here to discuss. Speak not to me of contracts. Consider our contract now null and void. I've no interest in working for you any longer. Go back and tell your tinkerers that. You are in violation of the appropriate cancellation procedures. Um, the voice kind of uh, rings out again. I care not for your concerns. As I said, leave me at once. I wish not to be disturbed. And don't come back. Juggernaut just kind of just like gonna... the servos. His head kind of turns directly toward you, toward you, uh, Melishira, or is it Melish, Melshira? Melshira, yes. Yeah. What should we do now? Well, at this point, I assume all we can really do is insist. Excellent. Do we see another way in? Shall I kick down the door? Um, that would work. The door looks up pretty heavy, um, but if you go up, uh, you can probably, with a little effort, get it uh, get it open. Um, you think it would probably take more than just one of you. I don't. I guess unless you're incredibly strong. Uh, I, in fact, have a powerful build. My unit was constructed <laughs> for extreme physical strength. Um, I happen to have a little augment that I've made. The strength of ten men, one could even say. Uh, the voice kind of rings out as you step up to the door one last time, uh, and it goes, If you won't be persuaded, then there's nothing I can do. But I assure you, the welcome will not be hospitable. Uh, and that is all you hear as you step up to the door. Uh, go ahead and... Oh, well, you have a powerful build, so you can kind of... You, you just naturally do this. Um, so you go up to the door and begin uh, pushing and... Uh, before I push, I would take the shield off my back. A very large, brilliant shield uh, covered in what looks like a web-like pattern. Seemingly um, made of adamant. Uh, and uh, also, as I'm kind of, uh, as you're kind of describing, would you care to describe your whole sort of uh, character's appearance as you are a, a warforged, which is a pretty, uh, a pretty rare individual? Juggernaut version 27.06 beta, code name, immovable object. Height, 6 feet, 5.238 inches. Armor plating, composite. Um, and uh, as you're kind of going over your specs, you reach out uh, and begin shoving open the door, uh, which loudly kind of grates the stone as you push it forward, um, revealing within uh, what appears to be uh, a fairly well-lit, uh, a, a fairly well-lit corridor before you. Uh, can you now see it? Yes. Very good. Where um, are we looking? <clears throat> uh, you should be in the bottom left of the map. Uh, all of you should have tokens there. I can't oh, see I can't anything. I see anything. Oh. I see very well. Uh, let me make sure that your tokens are properly adjusted. Hold on one second. I also don't have dark vision. So. Um, uh -oh. this, sh this should be lit anyway. Uh, what about now? Oh, I can see. Great. Uh, sorry about that. I forgot to check off has sight. I do a lot of dynamic lighting. Uh, and you as well, Lance? Bingo, just popped up. Excellent. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so before you, you see kind of a, a long corridor, the... The floors of this hallway um, seem to be made of a well-polished obsidian, um, and uh, 
yeah, on, on the walls you can see some very like beautiful looking tapestries. Uh, they appear to be you know, woven of, of fine cloth, and they depict uh, various kind of battles, it looks like, victories of the fire giants in the past. Uh, and, um, yeah, what do you guys do? Do you step in? Or... Captain Melashira. Let's see Are if we, we can find this. Are we going to full extermination? Let's hold off on a full extermination. Let's just see if we can't find a bit of a peaceful place to negotiate with Snip. Very well. Stay behind me. And, uh, I will, I will begin to walk in very loudly as my feet cling as I am a giant iron monster. Um, uh, and behind you is, is uh, Melashira, as you, uh, begin kind of walking behind, uh, is your homunculus kind of with you right now? Yes. She uh, hasn't you, moved too you... much, so at the moment it looks more like I have... Among my very ostentatious outfit, a rather intricate and finely detailed small glass fairy of a sort on my left arm. Um, and uh, right now, uh, she's just kind of sitting, uh, just kind of sitting in wait and dormant. Indeed. Very good. Um, you step through, uh, and um, what about uh, what about you? Uh, I'm struggling with your name, and it'll take me a little while. Uh, Hob. Well, I, Hob is easy. We can just do Hob. Uh, Hob, what, what does your character look like? Uh, darker complexion, finely dressed, sort of like long, um, probably reddish coat. Uh, very, I, I imagine, almost old, or like sort of western, but more modern western kind of duster kind of coat. Like, it's a duster, but it's, it's like... It's a modern, modern duster. Yeah, and but like reddish in color, with like gold on the out, outline. Bald, shaved bald head. Probably a goatee. Um, stands up straight, but isn't very, uh, isn't very strong looking. Uh, kind of carries himself like he is. <laughs> carries himself well, definitely. Mm. Um, but yeah, he, so he's um. He looks very professional in a lot of, in a way, but also, I guess he almost looks like a vampire hunter. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a that's a succinct way of putting it. Now that you've added it all up, that is a very vampire hunting uh, aesthetic. Um, so yeah, um, the three of you begin walking down this corridor. Um, Juggernaut's kind of stepping ahead, clanking very loudly as his uh, metal feet kind of crash on the obsidian floor. Uh, and in the distance, you're able to hear. Um, you're able to hear some more clanking, uh, and you actually see what looks like a, a big kind of chunk of uh, metal. It looks like just a huge sword uh, gets tossed and kind of clutters to the ground uh, in the hallway up here. Uh, and you can also hear the mumble of kind of low-pitched conversation. Continuing pursuit of negotiations. <laughs> Which All right. way, Milshira? Well, we're in a corridor, further in and further up, I suppose. Uh, are these tapestries, like, do they look like they're part of the wall, Pete? Or, I mean, like, if I look right here, it looks like there's, like, a room down there. Is that um, is that evident or no? Um, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, very well. Oh, goodness, my character sheet's all sorts of wrong right now. Um, oh, boy. Uh, I'm just going to roll a wisdom check, because I can't scroll down for some reason. Why do I have a plus one? Um, anyway, it's a 13. Okay, um, 13. Uh, you can see um, a very s slight kind of shifting of movement. So about. It actually is a 17, but sorry, go ahead. Um, you're able to notice kind of a slight shifting of movement about this tapestry, uh, and it's kind of like blowing uh, a little bit at the bottom, implying some wind coming from other underneath it. It seems like there's a space behind it. I will uh, take out, take again off my shoulder, my massive metal. Actually, it probably doesn't come out of my shoulder. It probably, like, detaches from my side, like, ping, comes out of my massive construct body, uh, my big uh, forge hammer. Okay. <laughs> the forge hammer just <laughs> extends, uh, and you step up to the tapestry. What do you do? I go to push it aside. Um, all right, yeah, you move over to the, kind of the edge of it, uh, and as you look, uh, as you look in, uh, let me remove it 
Um, you kind of are like holding it to the side right now, uh, and you can see within uh, what appears to be a uh, a very large, uh, just fully grown adult fire gi giant. He's wearing uh, kind of a, a full plate mail. Uh, He's sitting in a chair at the moment, uh, and to his side is a huge kind of hefty greatsword, uh, and he seems to be leaning back in the chair asleep. Uh, to his right, you can see a big polished brass horn um, that it seems he was kind of supposed to blow, but right now he's not really seeming to be paying much attention as a door guard. A... As my head turns around in like a 360 degree circle and just looks toward Melshira for... You can hear the, the deep snore, kind of... Let's see if they won't be a little more understanding face-to-face. -face. Uh, just in case things get too hectic, uh, you might want to... Oh god, I'm big! Why do I feel a strange, large presence behind me? <laughs> <laughs> Juggernaut, are we about to be ambushed? He looks quite asleep, or dead. It is hard to tell. <sighs> is this Lord Snore? Yeah. Was, <laughs> was that a joke? Pardon? Apologies, my vocal recognition receptors are not always accurate. We are here for Lord Snore, correct? Pete, can you make me tinier? Uh, yes. One moment, please. I don't know. How, I don't know how to do th cheat like Jeremy. <laughs> um, I will take the horn anyway. I will take his 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 warning horn. All right, uh, you go and try to grab the horn. Uh, it's like the length of your arm. Uh, it's it's made of a kind of a polished dark wood, uh, and it's pretty easy to pick up. It's you know it's light for uh, for you, someone of your kind of powerful build, uh, but it's very kind of cumbersome. This does not appear to be Lord Snore. We should continue, Melshira. I believe we're working, looking for Lord Snore, not Lord Snore. Snore. Oh. Um. Mm. Well, I My suppose it's best to... Oh. Go Do on, go ahead, Juggernaut. I was simply going to apologize to the great Bayou, Havaja Fuskipi. Ita. Uh, it's all right. He's not it's a not problem. A... Well, as the sayings go, it's best to leave sleeping giants lie. On to Lord Snare, then. Very should well. we let him lie, or should we potentially uh, eliminate him? It seems a bit early to go through on a killing spree. We at least have to assure that negotiations have in fact fallen. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, failed. Very well. All right. I've taken his horn. It will prevent them from alerting others. Um, in that case, uh, you just kind of lower the tapestry back down uh, and step Good away. Night, sweet prince, snore. I will continue. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and as you're moving down, uh, you can see uh, in front of you um, a couple of these, uh, a, a couple of the murmuring that you heard before it kind of continues um and, and you hear one of them kind of go we gotta hurry we gotta hurry uh and uh, a voice kind of responds i know that uh and you just see kind of like things being like tossed backwards at you uh pieces of like metal and junk are just kind of being thrown uh uh thrown behind uh and just out into the hallway um uh, juggernaut you just kind of casually put your shield up in front of you as one of them kind of uh, comes hurtling your way unbeknownst to you uh, as there appears to be um from what you can see, uh, it looks like there's at least one more. Uh, but right now, you can see uh, what appears to be a uh, an Etten, this kind of large two-headed giant uh, that seems to be kind of digging through a, what looks like just a huge pile of junk and trash. So I, I imagine as they're like throwing the stuff back as as uh, as Juggernaut's getting close, one of the pieces of metal that looks like it's just going to land on the ground just suddenly just whoop goes and slams into his shield. Interesting. Oh, not even, it's not even going towards you, and then it just redirects. It just redirects you. because of my cursed shield, exactly. Oh, man. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, 
Uh, as you're getting closer, your shield is, uh, does it stick? Is it magnet-like? No, things just hit it and boing. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see Juggernaut is leaving an odd trail in his wake as all of these kind of, like, pieces of rubble are, are being just, like, hit into the shield, none of them having any, you know, detrimental effect, uh, you know, just pretty casually thrown. Uh, and, yeah, you can just hear these two giants kind of, um, uh, digging into this huge pile of trash, um, just a little bit kind of confused and seemingly in a bit of a panic, uh, and you just hear them kind of talking, We have to get to King Snow! I know that! I know that! Why do you think we're digging? Uh, and then the other one on the other side goes, Yeah, what he said! Uh, and then uh, another head on that same giant goes, But we have to do it quick! Uh, they're just throwing junk and stuff out of the way. Uh, they don't seem to have noticed you guys at all uh, as you're coming up behind them. Perhaps we should simply walk around them. That seems to be a solid idea. Very well. Um, all right, well, go ahead and make me a... a, a actually, as you say, perhaps uh, we should walk around them. Uh, behind them, one of them kind of like turns... Uh, uh, kind of turns to look at, look at you and just goes, Wah! Uh Sees you kind of standing there as one of the heads looks uh, and it says to the other one, There's someone behind us! Uh, they kind of, uh, that Etten kind of turns around and looks, Who are you? Oh, we're the dignitary party. We're here on a meeting with Lord Snow. And uh, good work, gentlemen. I see you're going through that quite efficiently. Yeah, King Snow. Well, he locked himself in his he locked himself in his throne room, piled up all this trash. We can't get through. We've been digging for hours. That sounds quite worrisome. Why did such a thing happen? I don't know. That's what he says. Well, you best keep digging, then. Don't do want any Snow of the other, in there. Do any of the other three of you know? Um, the other, uh, the other one that's kind of on the left on the other giant goes, I also don't know. Uh, and then two of the higher pitched ones go, I don't know. And then one of them goes, I have an idea. Please proceed. He's been telling us he doesn't want us around. He's got all kinds of stuff to do, but we're his guards. I don't think he likes us very much. We're supposed to be protecting him, you know? And he just sends us right out and everyone won't even see his wife. Kind of mean, if you ask me. Uh, one of them kind of turns around and continues kind of throwing trash. Wait a minute. Uh, and they kind of look. Uh, go ahead and make me uh, a deception check. Uh... Uh, with, uh, uh, for your previous bluff that you're uh, here on, like, a, a, a diplomatic mission. Which is, I guess, a is little bit true. Eh, it's a little bit of a bluff. I mean, we're here on... Uh, I'll let you pick persuasion or deception. Who's uh, making this rule? That would be you. I think that's you. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, get in some few tips here and there from uh, my good old friend. Let's see if I can't do this with some of that... Sweet, sweet D4. Persuasion, my boy. Um. All right, yeah. Um, they kind of just buy it, and they just go, All right, well, you won't be able to meet with King Snow because, well, he's behind all this trash. Uh, and they're kind of digging, but we should have him dug out within the next few days. That's good to hear. Would there be anyone that we could talk to in the meantime about our business? Uh, one of them kind of goes, um, dinner should be ready soon. You could talk to the matron. Just up thank ahead you. there. Ah, oh, thank you. You've been quite helpful. We gotta get back to digging. King Snow ain't gonna protect himself. Sure he, enough. Is, is that true? Is he unable to protect himself? Um... If he can protect himself, why would he hire us as guards? Additional protection. Uh, seems unnecessary, but maybe. He's got other guards too, actually. But he has a big sword, so I'm sure he knows how to swing it. Well, that is good. Good, uh, keep on working. 
we may need to talk to him yet. Um, and uh, are you continuing to move forward with just kind of like uh, confidence? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so you just kind of step forward to this uh, kind of curve in the bend, uh, and you see kind of walking out here, uh, this appears to be a, uh, just like a fire giant, they're not wearing any armor, they just seem like uh, like a fire gi giant kind of uh, civvy, uh, if anything, uh, and um, yeah, they kind of, they kind of are, are walking out now as you're kind of moving through these chambers. Odd light kind of is casting around uh, from the bit of the glow in the walls from the various kind of like, uh, you can almost see like the molten lava just dripping right behind the surface of the uh, the stone of a lot of the work here. Uh, and you can see what looks like just a, uh, just a civvy fire giant uh, wearing a big kind of apron, um, got a kind of a club over their back. Uh, and uh, in their arms, you can see a full... Uh, what looks like just a full giant boar that they're kind of carrying um, that has been kind of skinned uh, and they're walking towards, uh, you, you can definitely smell some like fresh food being cooked. Or I don't know, do you have a, a sense of smell, Juggernaut? Yes, I am capable of all oral, wait, is that the right? I can I smell, smell. Olfactory <laughs> is the word you're looking for, Olfactory. Juggernaut. Thank you. <laughs> um, they yeah, did and, not install my dictionary correctly. Uh, and all of you are able to uh, smell what seems like, you know, food cooking from not too far over here. Uh, and as you're walking around the corner uh, and you're kind of like clanking shoes land, um, this uh, this particular fire giant kind of looks over at you. Uh, it's carrying this boar uh, and you see him yell down a, a corridor. Uh, you can see it kind of like opened up over here, but you can't quite see anything down it. Um, kind of yells down that corridor. Matron, do we have guests today? Um, and the voice kind of, uh, returns, No, there's no guests today! What are you talking about? Uh, and you see kind of lumbering out from the side as you come around here. Um, uh, and he's just kind of staring, looking at you, Juggernaut, uh, and, and you begin to hear the sound of a, another fire giant walking, uh, towards where you are. What do you guys do? I stand where I am. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Awaiting for the further command from my allies. Uh, same with you guys. Yep, I'll yep. walk up next to Juggernaut. Please stay I'll behind stay at me, Mashira. Uh, oh, of course. Uh, you see, um, uh, you see the kind of the matron kind of come around the corner uh, and looks at the uh, uh, looks at the group of you uh, and goes, "We don't have any guests today. What are you doing here?" I believe there may be a misunderstanding in the schedule. We're here to have a diplomatic meeting with King S Apparently he seems to have locked himself away. Those fine gentlemen clear in the path had uh, directed us to what I can only assume would be you, Matron, if that is correct? Um, she kind of uh, steps forward, and you can see that she is dressed... Um, actually pretty well equipped looking um she's carrying in her hand what looks to be like a, a huge club um and you realize you get closer it just looks like a massive obsidian spoon that she's wielding uh and she's dressed in like metal kind of cookware uh it's almost looks like she's about to like walk into a forge um but this is perhaps just the fire giant kitchenware uh she uh, kind of steps closer uh, and looks down at you. She has kind of long, uh, long red hair that's kind of matted and greasy, uh, and and she looks very, very kind of an old-looking fire giant. Um, she she leans in and looks down at you. King Snow isn't seeing anybody right now. Who told you this? Those fools. Uh, and uh, she kind of yells backwards, uh, and she kind of goes. I think we have intruders! Uh, the fire giant that's holding the boar kind of looks over at the group of you and uh, kind of like drops the boar and goes to put a hand up on the club. There is no reason for violence. I have that's been a bit hasty, isn't it? against extermination protocol. Uh, we just want to talk. Uh, go ahead and roll for initiative. <laughs> as you see them very much not gearing up to talk. Boop, boop. This is very dour music for what is sure to be a hilarious combat episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and uh, with that, uh, uh, wait, we're still missing one. Uh, oh yeah, you're you're not there yet, Jeremy. What? Oh, my thing didn't roll. No, it rolled. Was, you just didn't have your guy on. Quick. I definitely had my guy selected. That's very weird. Here we go. Fixed. Uh, all right. The uh, <laughs> uh, the fire giant matron kind of wields her spoon at you, uh, and as soon as she kind of says that, she leans forward uh, and takes that huge spoon and goes to uh, crash it down onto you uh, as she swings with uh, incredible force. Uh, do -do -do -do. Let me get out so many character sheets. Um, uh, right at you, Juggernaut. Uh, just gonna make two attacks, uh, and this will deal uh, bludgeoning damage and not slashing damage if it hits. That's a 16 and Correct. a 22. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the fire giant matron uh, takes the no, takes the huge spoon uh, and brings it down on top of you and. Poof, uh, and two huge kind of hefty swings. Uh, both of them obviously strike you, who's just standing still, uh, and you just kind of like hold your shield up above you. What does it look like as you as you block this, these strikes? Uh, I'm actually, I probably am not holding my shield up at this moment. I probably just kind of like move a little bit, and it's just a glancing blow that doesn't really do very much to my incredibly tough armor. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it strikes one kind of, you know, hits the shoulder pad and falls off. Uh, the other one, you know, kind of hits, uh, would be like just a direct hit on the helmet, but a quick step back. Uh, and you see the uh, obsidian floor, this incredibly hard stone underneath uh, her huge kind of spoon club. Um, it <laughs> kind of cracks even a little bit, uh, but Juggernaut is completely unfazed uh, as we move now to you, Hob. I, uh... I'm like, you're making us do this then, and uh, I press like a button on my sleeve, and this sort, of, this sort of mechanical arm comes out from like, that sort of like goes along my right arm, and builds a like cro a, a heavy crossbow in my hands, basically. Uh, and then uh, I shoot her. <laughs> Radi radical? Uh, the crossbow <laughs> uh, kind of appears, go ahead and make an attack roll. Uh, that's absolutely going to hit. Ten, and then uh, the, the 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 mechanics of the crossbow automatically load in a second bolt, uh, and I shoot again. All right, uh, yeah, both hit for a grand total of 18 points of piercing damage. Uh, the two crossbow bolts kind of uh, fire into the uh, the matron. Uh, you see they kind of hit weak points in the uh, the kind of makeshift armor that she's wearing. It's solid, uh, but there's a lot of kind of holes in it. And uh, she gets kind of two points. She kind of calls out, ah, little rat. Uh, is anything else on your turn? Uh, what is the what is the action economy for summoning the turret? Anyone know? Um, I do not. Uh, Jeremy, you know? Uh, that's an excellent question. I know controlling it is a bonus action, but... Yeah, I think summoning it might be an action. I th think you're right about that. Yeah, it doesn't actually even specify. That's really weird. Well, we've learned something about the thing. Is it really not? Um, I, like, I don't I don't see it anywhere. Uh, I won't I'll that'll be it. I'll look into this while someone else goes. Action. Yes, yeah, an action. Okay, great. Um all right, and some, uh Sorry, good. Anything else on your turn then, Hob? Uh what do I have for spells? Um No, I think I'm good. For all right. Now. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us to uh, the servant, uh, who's going to run over. Uh, he runs out and goes, "Don't worry, I'll crush your matron." Uh, and he kind of takes out the um, uh, takes out the big club that he's wielding, uh, and is going to go and swing that also right down at you, Juggernaut. Uh, 
Uh, it's a 19, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other servant is going to kind of run out into the corridor, uh, and you see uh, another one of these uh, big fire giants kind of stepping out, also wearing uh, the pink dot uh, being indicative of one that's not wearing armor and doesn't seem quite as battle-equipped. Um, for future reference, as it moves to your turn, Juggernaut. Well, um, Juggernaut will take one step up to here. Please, everyone, remain calm. And I will just take the dodge action, awaiting for future orders. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, in that case, you dodge in place, uh, making yourself near unhittable as we move now to uh, Malashira. Malashira will just kind of step up this way a bit to uh, make sure he's nice and well behind Juggernaut. Well, Juggernaut, it appears negotiations have now fallen. Execute the extermination order. I'm sorry it's come to this, and I will... Exterminate. Excellent. Uh, and I will reach into my pack and pull out my alchemist supplies as I shall look forth at the matron and the first servant, and I shall conjure forth some acid at them. Um... All right, uh... Matron is going to make a dexterity saving throw. Which she is really good at. This is untrue. Actually, it should have been uh, it should have been a little bit higher than that. But um, she's going to fail and take another 13 points of acid damage. Nice. Uh, the acid kind of <laughs> singes all over. Uh, she is. Still looking pretty tough. Uh, giants are beefy. Uh, anything else on your turn? Need to roll. Uh, it affects one of the servants as well. Oh, my I'm mistake. Uh, he will also roll. Uh, and also fails. Uh, I'm going to take uh, 13 as well. That's a pretty good acid splash. Not too shabby. Um, Delilah, how about we focus on the large one? And I shall have Delilah fly up off my shoulder as you see this beautiful little crystalline pixie fly up and conjure forth a small little, uh, another orb of acid as it will make the motion of blowing a kiss towards the matron. That, uh, goes very wide. Oh, right, yeah. Um, that is not gonna hit, unfortunately. It, it kind of... <laughs> crashes into some of the wall, uh, and you see it dissolve a little bit of it, uh, as Delario, not quite warmed up yet, uh, blows this acidic kiss. Uh, the matron doesn't even seem to notice Delia, uh, having trouble tracking y the three of you who are so small. Delia, this tiny thing, uh, seems to be just completely out of her sight at the moment. Uh, anything else on your turn, Amel? That should do it. Uh, the matron kind of calls out, Come on, get out here! What are you two idiots doing down there? Uh, and the Ed Edens kind of walk up, and they're going, uh, and they kind of walk up and they go, they're just here on a diplomat mission. It's okay. Uh, and then one of the higher-pitched ones, they specifically said that they were only here for diplomacy. Um, and, uh, yeah, these Ettons are just kind of end their turn kind of speaking to you uh, like this. The Matron calls out, idiots! Uh, as we move to the top of the initiative, uh, and you see uh, kind of what here's like almost a howling uh, as running out from the corridor. Uh, you can see what looks like a pack of gnolls here uh, that also uh, are wearing some kind of like serving gear and equipment, but they also look just pretty nasty. Uh, and some of them are kind of like cackling uh, as they're running out. You hear one of them kind of, <laughs> finally, intruders! Uh, and they're running out into the way, uh, and they take their whole turn to get to there. Uh, and they're, uh, as they kind of move into this scene, uh, just like running between the legs of these giants, uh, just kind of darting uh, amongst like the big bumbling steps of the fire giants. Um, and that is all for the Knoll's turn. Uh, the matron uh, is going to continue to try and strike down at you, Juggernaut. Uh, but she will have disadvantage because I believe you took the dodge action on your turn. I did. Uh, so she will strike at you with. Oh, that was the uh, the servant, not the matron. My apologies. Uh, boop, boop. Both of uh, those would hit, activating automated defenses. 
All right, you bring down uh, you bring down the shield. What is your armor class when you have the shield? Thirty. Oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the second attack, uh, two pretty powerful strikes there, but uh, unfortunately neither one is enough to take you down uh, as the... Uh, or even scratch the... me. <laughs> yeah, in this case, um, <clears throat> um, you kind of dodge out of the way nimbly of uh, the first strike, and then the shield <clears throat> uh, comes up and blocks. And again, like, this time the weight of the punch, kind of your feet push under the ground and crack underneath you, but... There's no chance uh, of this strike hitting you. Uh, and that's all for the matron's turn. Um, and um, She's attacked me four times? Oh, no, she had disadvantage. Oh. So that was just me making two disadvantage. Oh, wait, she was automatically rolling disadvantage. Yeah. Ah, my mistake. Oh, good. Uh, I was just getting real scared for a second. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, and uh, that's all for their turn. Hob, what do you want to do? Oh, reinforcements I ain't doing with this. And I will load a special uh, bolt and fire it into the knolls. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> 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 um, uh, as the knolls kind of round the corner, uh, they kind of look over at you. Uh, and, and you see them, like, looking past you, like they were just going to dive dive through the lines past the, the huge metal thing that the giants aren't able to hit. Uh, and... Uh, as you kind of, they look right at you, they make contact, one of them kind of giggles and sneers, <laughs> uh, and you see like them foaming at the mouth, and that's the last thing you ever see of any of these gnolls <laughs> ever, ever again. <laughs> uh, the fire giants are obviously completely immune as the fire kind of blows up. Uh, one of them kind of looks down and goes, oh, nice, nice and warm. Oh, no, looks down at just the, the bodies of all the gnolls, which are just bone on the ground. Um... <laughs> Matron! Matron! The, the nose are all dead! Uh, she kind of calls out, They were useless anyway! Um. Uh, I, uh, I look to our giant, our Etten friends here, and I'm like, maybe you should get back to work. Uh, they didn't see what happened at all. And they oh just no, kind I'm, of, just, I'm just, I know they oh, didn't yeah. say that. See, uh, they? And they just look at you, and, and they go, uh, one of them goes, I know that that's what we should be doing. Uh, the, the other head kind of responds, but the matron said to come over, but I was telling the matron, you guys are just diplomacy. Indeed. Uh, and as that this is, is exactly happening, what we're doing. Uh, the servant kind of, uh, this servant kind of like uh, circles around to here. Uh, and so this other one can get in uh, and is actually going to, uh, is actually going to swing at you uh, you, uh, Malashira. Oh, no. Uh, as this servant will take its great club and bring it down on you with incredible force. Uh, it's gonna swing at you twice. Both of uh, those miss. Uh, oh my god, the ACs. Uh, and then the other one's at you, Jeremy. Uh, which, oh, those were both at disadvantage anyway. Uh, but both of them also miss, plus you still have the shield. <laughs> that one actually couldn't have hit you. Um... And uh, that's all for the Fire Giant Servant's turn, who make a couple of uh, weeks, uh, weak strikes there. Um, Juggernaut, what you gonna do? Please refrain from additional violence and accept death. Uh, I will then attack <laughs> it with my mace. Uh, actually, yeah, I think... No, I'm not gonna attack with my mace. Uh, I will instead say... <laughs> uh, how do I do this? I imagine I, like, swing my mace around. Think, like, fucking, um, what's his name? General Grievous from, like, the Star Wars oh, thing. Oh, like, spins his hand around, but the, the mace kind of opens up and acid splashes out <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, at the two little giants. Uh, the, two, the two weaker ones? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, both of them are going to make dexterity saving throws. Uh... Right. And I don't think that's. Oh, that's gonna. One of them's gonna save. Um, they take ten. Eleven damage a second. Uh, eleven damage to this one. Excellent. Boop, boop. Uh, this one kind of gets burned. And just goes. I'm so acid in my eyes. That is the oh. artificer special. All artificers use acid splash. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's um, too good. 
Uh, anything else on your turn, Juggernaut? No. Um, I'm Malshira. capable of additional action. You know, it is quite true, we're only here for diplomacy, but uh, I do regret to inform you, self-defense is our way. And I suppose I'll have to teach you that not only is Acid Splash quite a uh, widely accepted uh, artifice uh, special, but so is Acid Slash, as I will bonus action <laughs> cast Arcane Weapon from Acid. Um, oh yeah, your weapon all of a sudden glows with magical uh, acid damage. Your, your weapon kind of speaks to you telepathically and uh, uh, in your mind, and you hear, this isn't going to corrode me, is it? Not in the slightest. Don't worry, my friend. Um, and uh, yeah, you're going to make an, uh, an attack, I presume? I should make two attacks at uh, uh, this boy right in front of me here. Uh, all right, swing away. Yeah. Um, 13 and 26 both hit these guys, as they're not heavily armored like the other one was. Uh, so go ahead and roll damage. Oh my. Um, oof, nice. Uh, 17 and 13. Uh, so that's a total of 30 points of damage. Uh, this one uh, is starting to look bloody, this servant over here. Um, uh, as you kind of... Uh, kind of slash at him with the acid sword. Uh, more and more of these just, like, terrible acid burns, uh, which the experience of burning is definitely something that's pretty foreign to a fire giant. And you can tell this one's starting to get pretty unnerved in fighting you. Uh, uh, and uh, anything else on your turn? Ah, uh, that should do it. Pete, uh, I, I want to just mention, I did forget to cast a spell on my turn with a bonus action. Would you mind if I did that since it's only been one of our turns? Uh, that's fine, but please don't have it be Shield of Faith. Shield of Faith! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, the Ettons kind of walk up, and they're going, Matron, it's just diplomacy! And the Matron kind of calls out, Just attack them, you idiots! Uh, and they kind of look down, uh, they look down towards you, Hob, and they just go, Uh, uh, and then the, uh, the, the I other I shake head my goes, head at them, don't, like, don't do it. <laughs> uh, the other head kind of looks down at you and just goes, Sorry! Uh, and they're gonna swing down at you with, uh... Uh... Actually, go ahead and make me, uh... Go ahead and make me a persuasion check. Ooh, I'm not great at this, but, you know, eh, that's not terrible. Um... Alright, yeah, uh, as you kind of look down at them and you just shake their head, uh, kind of telling them not to do it, um... Uh, you see they now have kind of, like, taken out their weapons on both sides, uh, both Ettons. Uh, they have a battle axe on one side and a morning star on the other side for both of them. Uh, and the heads on the, uh, the heads on the left that speak in the lower voice, uh, the, the bigger heads kind of go to, like, swing their battle axes down, uh, and both of them just kind of, like, swing on either side of you, not hitting you, and they go, sorry, I have to fight you! Uh, but then the little heads just swing at you straight away. Um, oh, Little head bastards. <laughs> <laughs> How um, dare you attack the great Bayou Huyav? Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, does 21 and 20 hit? No. <laughs> oh, no, you also <laughs> shield. Uh, <laughs> as you throw up a force field as well, uh, mm. preventing any damage. Uh, is little head. He's, he's, Actually, a, ma it's, he's it's, a magic arm, matron. It's much more mechanical with little, like, arms that come out of my back that hold the like weapons off <laughs> uh, he, uh, as this happens he goes he's a magic arm matron uh, as the shield arms <laughs> uh, reach out and uh, block the uh, the incoming weapons uh, I was going to say anything else on your turn but that was their turn it just felt like your guys' turn on their turn uh, consistently uh, that's going to bring us to the matron who is going to uh, continue to pummel you with relentless force uh, juggernaut um Please lie down and accept the sweet relief of death. <laughs> uh, Juggernaut, we don't have to kill them. Exterminate. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and at this point, um, you see a fire giant kind of step out from a corridor up here and just kind of is, is calling out. This one looks like a pretty well-equipped guard uh, and kind of calls out, What's all the ruckus down? Uh, and then and he just sees what's going on. And that is going to bring us uh, next initiative to Hop. Your matron is attacking us on our diplomatic mission. 
as I shoot her. <laughs> Guys, too many Star Wars. First, first, going on uh, first, so <laughs> we're on a diplomatic mission. As well. Uh, so let's get some arcane. You know what? I'll do acid as well. Acid's the the theme here. Uh, and now I will I will shoot her. Uh, assume a thirteen misses the matron. Um, a thirteen does in fact miss the matron. Uh, kind of <laughs> harmlessly hits off the armor, but a nineteen hits. Uh, for thirteen damage. Thirteen points of damage. Nice. Uh, oh, I just accidentally gave her thirteen health. I gotta take that away. If you um, stop, if you stop attacking us, we will not attack you. Um. The matron kind of looks at you uh, and goes, Well, if we stop attacking you, then you'll go in and wreak all on a, your shit of steel, probably, or something. Uh, oh, and, just need to talk. Uh, and at that point, uh, you hear your sword uh, speak to you once more. Uh, Melashir and goes, I have been detecting quite a few interesting gems around us. I can feel them nearby. It would be nice if we could take those, actually. Speaks to you telepathically. Well, I suppose if things go worse than they already are, we couldn't exactly leave that just to wait. Um, uh, and uh, as you're having this conversation, uh, a huge uh, great club falls down upon you as one of the servants goes to swing at you. Uh, doop. Boop. That is a miss. Um, all right, uh, and then against you as well, Juggernaut. Uh, not even close. Um, and that is Only going to... Only like 16 points off. Yeah. <laughs> um, Juggernaut, what do you want to do? Uh, Juggernaut, seeing these boys attacking Melashira and not having the best round last round, uh, will swing his mace again uh, at this buddy here. And I will just go... Oh, twang, twang. Uh, hit, hit. Wow! Wow! Oh, that's weird. It doesn't have a damage type. It's bludgeoning damage. I suspected it would be. Uh, all right. Yeah, this one's looking pretty beat up, uh, and he's starting to also look kind of scared. Um, uh, and uh, I meant to say this in the last round, uh, but I'll just do it now. Uh, the fire giant that kind of walked into the hallway uh, kind of yells at the servants there, and he goes, "Get down, you idiot!" Uh, and this servant, as you kind of hit him with his mace, just kind of like crumbles and falls over to his knees and just uh, kind of curls up a little bit, uh, not seemingly used to getting just his ass handed to him, especially by regular-sized individuals. Um, anything else on your turn, Juggernaut? Um, so that other giant looks like he's going to charge. Um, uh, you see him, he's got like his greatsword slung over the shoulder, uh, but currently you see him actually hefting what looks like a massive rock. Very well. Yep, that's all I'm doing. Um, all right, uh, Melchior. Hmm. Well, that doesn't exactly look extremely appetizing to take. As much as I want to take the dodge action, I feel like I should repay the uh, rudeness of the one who would strike me in a conversation, as I shall so, uh, show him the power of Acid Slash once again. Um, very well. Uh, Alright, 16 is going to hit. Um, he is looking like he's on death's door. So sad. This all could have been avoided. Uh, you actually had advantage on that attack as well, uh, because he was prone. He kind of threw himself prone. Ooh, let's crit fish. Yeah, ah, so close. No, no crit, but very close. Uh, and you have another attack? Yeah, you could have just walked away. Uh, and that is going to finish this servant off uh, as you... Uh, as you kind of stab in with uh, with Terulai, uh, it cuts across and he just kind of burns and cries out, "No!" Uh, and kind of rolls around on the ground in some pain before the acid finishes him off. He falls unconscious. Um, anything else on your turn? 
I shall head back this way. Let me see if I can do it without being... Yep, um, nope, I'm still going to be inside of that, but... And, uh, and as you step to there, you do actually provoke an opportunity attack. Um, because ah. the threat range on those guys is a little bit bigger. Terrali, no, I mean, not, not Terrali, fuck, what's your name? Melchira, stay near me. Uh, it's 24 towards you. Oh, that does hit. Um, for 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, do you need to make a concentration check, probably? I do, in fact. Um, all right, yeah, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> uh, you're also as... a warcaster. I am, in fact, also well, a warcaster. Like, it's almost like they're acid splash warcaster. Some pretty similar builds. Um, Indeed. Uh, I will bonus action after taking this big old thwomp, kind of just look back with a annoyed scowl on my face. Delilah, handle that one. And, uh, I shall have Delilah spit upon him as, uh... I cannot squeeze in here, can I, behind, uh... Um, nah, it's, it's pretty tight. You're about as close to him as you can get. Okay. Uh, dang. I guess I just stay here and have Delilah spit on the other side. Or, rather, cast a kiss to him. That's a pretty good kiss. Um, which one, I'm sorry, which one was that targeting? targeting? The other servant. Oh, yeah. Um, yep, that's definitely going to hit for ten more points of acid damage. Nice. Uh, yep, and that's the first damage I think this one has taken. Um, uh, any, th uh, that's going to do it for your turn, I assume? That's it. Uh, the Ettons are continuing to look down at you, Hob, uh, and are going to, uh, the two big ones, uh, kind of, uh, once again, go to swing down at you and go, uh, one of them just kind of, like, swings haphazardly in the air, like, above you, and just, oops, I missed, uh, and the other one, I guess you can't hit a diplomat, uh, and then the other two, uh, just kind of call out, idiots, just, just hit him, uh, and are gonna swing at you, oof, big rolls, uh, that's a 22 to hit. And the shield comes up. <laughs> uh, you block it uh, once again uh, with your arms. Kind of reach out and grab the Morning Star just before it's about to strike. Uh, you are totally fine as we move on to the uh, to the matron's turn, uh, who uh, just just kind of looking down at you, getting kind of frustrated, looking juggernaut. Just why won't you? Uh, and goes to uh, goes to swing. Du -du -bu -bu. Um, she, she doesn't... Okay, I was thinking for a second you did Sanctuary, but you just did the... No. No. Uh, and uh, from kind of down the hallway, um, that fire giant, who is kind of a guard, uh, takes from his side a huge rock uh, and goes and uh, throws it down the corridor uh, towards you... Uh, uh, towards you, Malashira, as he chucks a rock down the hallway at you. Big boulder. Oh. Oh. oh! Man, this is why you should have stayed near me. I remembered it as soon as I ended my turn, why I should have stayed by you. Yeah, <laughs> that's too far away. Um, wait, it doesn't, does your thing not... Further than 10 feet? Oh, shit. Well, literally feet. just outside. Rip. Um, yeah, a, hu <laughs> a huge... Great, but it's great, I'm glad it went to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a huge, yeah, I want to hit you too, actually. A huge boulder uh, flies down and catches you right about the side of the head. Your ears begin to ring uh, as it smashes into the wall. Uh, and this individual seems a bit more martially trained uh, and is looking um, pretty angrily. And it looks like he has a couple more of these rocks in his inventory uh, as you take a, a sizable uh, a sizable hit to the side. And he kind of calls out... <laughs> Uh, a little bit of victory as he pumps his fist in the air as he hits you. Uh, and that's it for the full fire giants. Uh, Hub. Uh, I, I look, or actually I don't look. I just say to the, the smaller head one, I'm like, gentlemen, if you continue this action, you're going, you're, you'll be going down a path you do not want to go down. As I shoot the other servant. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make an intimidation check. Yeah, I'm not great at them, but hey! Ooh, all right. Uh, and fire away. Um, 
that is going to absolutely hit uh, for a grand total of 16, uh, 25 damage. Uh, nice, that servant's starting to uh, take something of a uh, take something of a beating there. Uh, anything else on your turn? Uh, nope, that's it. All right, um, the servant's uh, going to uh, look down and, and swing once more with the great club. Um, Why do you even continue to try? Uh, and as you say that, uh, as it just kind of this one, uh, I imagine this one isn't even blocked. It just kind of bounces off of your head, uh, and he kind of looks over the matron, and he just kind of gets confused. Matron, I, I, I can't do it. Uh, and you see kind of some tears welling up in his eyes. Oh, <laughs> you are pathetic. <laughs> um, and he kind of like takes a tentative step back uh, as you say you are pathetic, provoking an opportunity attack if you want to take one. I will swing. With the reckless <laughs> abandon. All right. More like this. Uh, um. All right. Uh, that's absolutely gonna hit for nine bludgeoning. Uh, for nine points of bludgeoning damage. Excellent. Yeah. And the matron. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, the servant there is starting to look like kind of defeated a little bit, just emotionally, uh, as he's edging away, and he takes a couple steps back. Um. Uh, and the matron kind of looks, and, and as he's walking away, the matron just kind of, like, instinctively, like, goes out and backhands him, and just goes, Fine, I'll deal with them myself! Um, oh, I yell at the, at the one that's walking away, I'm like, you're making the right choice, boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, that's gonna bring us... Oh, what was the initiative thing? Uh, next, where's the initiative thing? Where'd it go? Oh, it's, it's just me. underneath, it's underneath the thing, it's to you, Juggernaut! What do you want to do? I will continue bludgeoning this fool. Uh, all right, uh, matron, or are you going after this, pursuing the servant? No, the uh, matron. All right. Bludgeon, bludgeon. Uh, second one hits. Bludgeon. I will take a uh, step back, which I think is still in her reach. Um, actually not. Uh, that does provoke an opportunity attack. Really? Yeah, she only got ten foot reach. Very well. Uh, and she will make that against you. <laughs> Just, what, what do you care? Uh, <laughs> Interesting strategy. I would recommend attacking me next time. Um, and the sword <laughs> hits into the ground, uh, just completely whiffing on that one. Uh, and, uh, or the, the big spoon does. Um, and that's all for your turn, Juggernaut, or you got something else? Oh, that's all. All right. Uh, Melshir? Uh, you took a pretty hearty blow last time. I kind of let loose a sigh and begin to fix up my hair, and as I do so, I'm just going to go ahead and get off some of that sweet, sweet, let's go crazy and do a level 2 cure wounds on myself. Right. Um. Ah. I always forget to turn off uh, acid and damage mods on this. <laughs> you I don't burn myself. You, you take you heal for twenty one and take nine points of acid damage. <laughs> um. All right, yeah, you you heal for twenty one. Uh, and can you describe again for me? I, I I think I missed a little bit. But what does it look like when you do your healing? Uh, uh, right now, I'm just fixing up my hair that got all in a mess with that bull. And ah, I, yes, yes. As I finish fixing my hair, I shall cast a scornful look down to this fellow that thinks he can mess with a man. Delilah, if you would be so kind to teach our friends some manners. And she shall blow a kiss at this boy. Uh, 17 unfortunately misses. Uh, he's wearing kind of full plate at the moment. Um... As the uh, the kiss kind of again, it, you see it singe a little bit of the front of the armor, but he is unfazed as he's looking at you again, uh, rock in hand. Uh, anything else? I believe that should do it. All right, uh, the Ettons, uh, as they kind of as you look up at them uh, and you kind of advise them against their current course of action, um, yet the big ones go, "I know, right? We shouldn't hit diplomats," uh, and the little ones kind of go. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't hit diplomats. <laughs> uh, and they take cautious steps backwards. Uh, the matron is furious as she sees this. Uh, she just kind of calls out, Fight, you idiots, fight! Uh, but they seem... Uh, they seem kind of happy to not hit diplomats at the moment. Uh, Looks like they might be more straight of me than they are of you, matron. 
Um, uh, as they've seen some, they've seen some shit in the last couple seconds. As these <laughs> tiny things uh, just like burned and like as a collective just burned this other just humble giant who is just like a civilian to death. Uh, and the is he dead yet? I thought he was unconscious. Uh, oh, um. Making death saving throws, you don't know. Mm. Uh, Matron uh, is gonna step over, um, uh, step in one, and continue to swing at you. Uh, continue to swing at you, Juggernaut. Uh, relentless pursuit. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other uh, fire giant down the hallway takes another rock, kind of ca- catches in his hands again, and just goes. This one right between the eyes. Tosses it down the hallway at you, uh, Malashira. I beckon it to uh, come hit me. It uh, goes, swings right toward your head, and right inches from your head turns and swings and bounces against my shield harmless. 27 misses? Uh, oh, wait, actually. 27 is exactly my armor class. <laughs> You're going to... Yeah, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> uh... All right, that's fine. You're burning, burning shield. Uh, the the rock <laughs> uh, flies forward uh, and goes and kind of redirects into your shield. Uh, and he kind of looks down at his hand and then looks back up at you, kind of confused about what happened. As he goes and picks up another rock and like is like twisting his wrist, like, do I put do I put spin on it or? Um, I give a half-hearted shrug. Um. And uh, nice curveball. <laughs> Hob, uh, you say nice curveball, it's your turn. <laughs> As I shoot the matron. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, hits and hits, roll damage. Uh, for. Oh, that that's. Was, that was a beefy one. <laughs> uh, that was some nice damage. Um, 39? Yeah, 39. Total 39? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, the matron's starting to look pretty beat up uh, at this point. Uh, Maybe you should follow the lead, matron. <laughs> uh, she doesn't seem willing to, to give up just yet, uh, but a lot of, like, her hair is kind of, like, singed off and burned by the acid. You just see, like, the long kind of raggedy red hair is just on one side now, and the rest of it has just been, like, melted away by acid. Uh, she's a pretty horrifying sight at this point. Um, as we move on now... Uh, to the servant, uh, who one is dead and another one uh, steps backwards uh, and into this room. Uh, you see the heavy kind of doors open, and he just kind of like edges back slowly and then turn or, turns around and runs into that room. Um, and uh, Juggernaut. Extermination has gone on longer than 30 seconds, deploying additional kill power. Uh, and a strange spider-like turret comes out of his back and scuttles onto the floor. Oh. Ooh. Uh, 26 will hit for sure. That's that's a turn. Um. Wow. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wow. They'd only do 14. Yeah, yeah. Um, and knocks back, right? Oh, uh, oh. A little fire from over here, so it just bumps her into the wall, so she doesn't actually move. All right. Um, and then it'll scuttle back to where it was uh, behind me. Fair enough. Um, bounces into the wall uh, and kind of like uh, leans against it a little bit. Uh, it looks like it. Uh, she looks like I said getting pretty beat up um, as your turret crawls out. Anything else, Juggernaut? Nope. Melshira? You know, this has gone on quite a while, but you could still surrender. We could have a nice chat about our issues that we're here to talk about in the first place. Though, of course, if not, we do have plenty more acid where this came from, as I will acid splash the matron. Ignore the extra five. Um. Alright. Um, matron will make a dex save, uh, and I assume that you're not going to have it deal to anyone else. Yeah, uh, let's not do that. Weird. I guess you could go for the downed guy. Uh, that's going to fail real damage. Oh, you already did? For... Uh, that's... Is it the total of that, or is it just the first one? It's just the ten. 
I forgot okay, that it okay. does the damage extra prompt on uh, saves as well. Ah, okay, yes. All right. Um, the uh, the Ettons kind of go, I, We're going to go and dig uh, for snow, if that's okay. Uh, and they walk back over and kind of edge backwards, just like you saw that servant do. Uh, and they start tentatively, while still looking at you, like taking a couple of pieces out of the pile and putting them on the ground. Good work, gentlemen. And uh, after that, they kind of go back and go back to their old work. Um, the uh, uh, the matron uh, is going to, at this point, um, uh, looks down at you uh, and is starting to get kind of frustrated. Uh, and is going to uh, go to pick you up. Uh, it's going to attempt to grapple you. <laughs> Extremely bad. Red alert. Red alert. <laughs> um, let me uh, roll that. Is that it? Oh, it was a deck, uh, sorry. Uh, athletics check. Christ, um, I'm inverted. <laughs> oh, uh, you got out of that one. Uh, she goes down, and with her second attack, she's going to attempt to grapple you. Yeah. Uh, uh, this time she, uh, she kind of reaches down and goes, uh, she kind of looks at you and goes, I know just what to do with you, uh, and begins kind of walking this way, uh, and her speed is actually not half because you're so trivial for her to pick up. She's two size categories bigger than you. Uh, and she moves. Extremely bad. Extremely uh, bad. She moves over to here. Uh, and you see she's over a garbage chute, and you can hear what sounds like lava bubbling in that garbage chute. <laughs> um, that's going to bring us to Hob. Uh, is the what is her speed? Uh, oh, wait, shit. I was going by the floor tiles, and I forgot that these were that these things were huge. Uh, there she appears could... to be a lava chute up ahead. <laughs> yeah, you you scan the you scan the upcoming room and find out there's a lava chute. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yep, she gets to there, uh, just carrying a Juggernaut off. Oh dear. Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Tiny. I would, I would uh, suggest to bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> she just says. I guess that's what she says. She just says yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, twenty-one will hit. Yes. <laughs> I do suggest it. Uh, for seventeen. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Matron is, is nearing defeat, uh, but she has just a fire burning in her eyes and a fury uh, at this thing that she was unable to touch uh, and looks like she's just continuing on her current path at the moment. Um, servants are gone. Juggernaut, what do you want to do? What about the guard? Oh, wait, I forgot about... Oh, I forgot about the other guy who was supposed to throw. Yep, never mind. He's going to throw a rock at... Uh... <laughs> oh, oh no. Ooh. Oh no, it doesn't miss. It misses this time. Uh, and it kind of crashes into the wall above you and just goes, Rrr! come on. Uh, goes and picks up another rock. Uh, and it looks like, how many rocks has he thrown? Uh, this is his last rock. Then <laughs> um, he stops, starts walking closer to you so he can fire it at point blank. Um, thank you for reminding me, Jeremy. Uh, Melshira. What about uh... me? Oh wait, Juggernaut. That's why I guess everything's just. Also, I now. can't see my token. If you, my robot, if you can let me uh, see the turret, but um, uh, I'll give the you. Turret will start by, boop, 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 and we'll fire at the matron. Um, oh, 21 hits. Roll damage. Yeah. Um, 11 points of force damage. Uh, that's pretty good. Smacks her into the wall a little bit. <laughs> Please. Uh, Stop. I will hit her with my mace, hopefully. Um, 17 unfortunately misses. I will hopefully hit a second time. Uh, 29 does hit. Uh, what's the total there? 12 bludgeoning. Uh, so total of 23. Uh, the matron looks really near defeat. She's bleeding all over. She's covered in acid burns, but is not downed quite yet. Um. Ripperoni and pepperonis. Um. And, uh... No, it's Malashira. Malashira, no. Bingo. 
I will kind of quickly put a hand up and uh, grab on to Delilah as I shall scooby doop bop bop. Oh wow, we are super slow on this giant floor. Ah, uh, ooh, this is terrifyingly tight. Yeah, it's big. You know what? I'm sure this will come in handy, even if uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be used now. But uh, let's start with casting that sweet, sweet acid splash on the. Um. All right. Going to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh. Where is? Oh. Oh no. Uh. Let's see how she does. Five, um, and that's 14 points of acid damage. Would you care to describe your killing blow on the matron? There's this ever so faint glimmer of fear of the boulder guys coming closer and I don't have my uh, shield. Yet. So I begin chasing after it and kind of <laughs> running out of my speed and breath, kind of just pull out one of my vials and do that flick of the wrist for some acid and you see just that slow-mo of just the acid going through there in a nice little arc going right over the top of Juggernaut's head and just as there's suddenly that boof, boof, boof as she falls to the ground. Yes, uh, and as you describe it, she kind of calls out, No! No! Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and as she kind of, like, is leaning around the corner, she's, like, reaching out as she's falling to, like, dump you into the uh, the pit of lava, uh, and you fall just a bit short of it. Uh, as she's kind of... Uh, her death rattles kind of drive her forward, Juggernaut. Um, the Ettons are... Oh, wait. One thing is the bonus action, though. I shall oh, have my Delilah... My scoot forth this way a bit and uh, once again uh, blow her kiss at the soldier. Alright, swing away or kiss away. A 16 misses unfortunately. Um, and that brings us to the Ettons now officially uh, who I think we can remove as they are uh, kind of doing their own thing. Uh, and uh, and the uh, the matron is the same initiative as the soldier. Uh, the soldier kind of takes the last rock, uh, and the person who's most readily in sight uh, is going to be, uh, is going to be Hob, uh, who he's going to go ahead and throw a rock at you, Hob. Uh, his final rock. It's twenty. The, the <laughs> arms. <laughs> The catch third the rock. Comes out, uh, as the arms reach out and catch this huge boulder uh, that's flying. Toward... put it down. Uh, and this kind of um, this fire giant, uh, as you catch the boulder, he goes, "Pretty strong. I should let some people know about this." Uh, and he turns around and starts uh, kind of jogging backwards and deeper into the space. Um. And, um, I think that's going to bring us out of an, unless you're going to chase down, uh, I guess that depends on, yeah, are, are you going to try and chase down the fire giant, or is this the end of initiative? Um, I'm not going to chase him down. I go to this fire giant, and put my hand on its neck, Can okay. I feel blood flowing. <laughs> um... Go ahead. Uh, actually, you know, I'll just give it to you. Uh, as you kind of reach down and, and put your hand on this fire giant's neck, um, all life has left. <laughs> he is he is very much dead. That is unfortunate. I'll go over to the matron. Uh, oh, whoa. Is she alive? Uh, oh, the matron is... Uh, no? I was going to say the matron is very much dead. Anyway, um, but as... <laughs> collapses to the floor. Uh, Juggernaut, you kind of land on your feet and just turn around. Uh, you can still hear, like, the slight little bits of breath uh, coming from the matron's uh, kind of cracked, raspy throat, uh, and you just you just finish the job. Yeah. <laughs> Did you well, then? I want to try Choking and jump her into the, the chute. Um, she's way too big. You'd have to... Powerful come... Bill? <laughs> Uh, it's not, the issue isn't your strength, it's her frame, uh, and the shoot is kind of small. I mean, you would have to make her smaller, which is too grisly. <laughs> too grisly to talk about. 
Juggernaut, please suspend executed order extermination. Uh, Extermination protocol deactivated. Uh, <laughs> do, do Juggernaut's eyes like stop glowing red or something like that? No, nothing really. Oh, no, just that's it. Changes. Yep, fair enough. Yeah, I'll be readying the welcome wagon for us. Maybe we should ask the fellow that ran this way. That's a good Some idea. Questions. All right. All right. Uh, and you, uh, you open the uh, no, heavy no, door. No, no, Juggernaut does it. Oh, okay. Juggernaut, you're gonna go open those doors? I have doors? a five strength. Get behind me. Uh, you open the heavy doors into this chamber, uh, and you see, uh, that servant kind of, uh, huddled up in kind of position, hiding. You can see just the top of his head sticking out over a big pile of crates. This appears to be, like, a, a larder, a storeroom for the kitchen. Uh, you can see all manner of, you know, there's a lot of, like, this really hard bread, uh, that's in, in various shelves and, like, stacked in spaces along the walls, and big crates and barrels, uh, full of presumably ales and foods. The storeroom for the, uh, for the stronghold here, uh, and he's just kind of, like, hiding and kind of shivering, just the top of his head sticking out. As the door just... We have questions for you. He kind of slinks down so that the top of his head is no longer slinking, uh, sticking out. You are literally a giant. We can see you behind the barrel. Uh, it's a giant-sized barrel. We can still see you. <laughs> uh, he kind of like... All right. <laughs> As I guess he says, it's a giant, giant-sized giant barrel. Uh, he sticks the head back up and just kind of uh, looks over at you. I don't want any trouble. We are not here for trouble. As mentioned, we are here on a diplomatic mission. It's not us who's been causing the trouble here. Yes, we did not shoot the first bolt. Well, we did because none of you used bolts, but we did not string this first spoon. How'd you get past the guard at the front? He, he should have let asleep. everyone... He just kind of looks down. Oh, <laughs> damn it. So we took his horn. Oh, yeah, I see that. Uh, <laughs> where, where, do you just have the store instract on your back? Yep. Um, <laughs> he, he, looks, uh, he looks at you now and goes, You're not going to kill me, are you? No. I can't imagine we'd find a reason to do something so extreme. You, well, you did kill my friend. I know. I know we were fighting. Call has been disabled. Okay. Uh, what do you want from me then? I'll leave. I'll go away. You are welcome to do that. But what? Do, what's? What do you know that is happening with Snur? King Snur has been out of his rocker lately. He's been held up in the throne room. He, he won't let anyone go see him. He piled up all that junk around so that no one can even get near there. Uh, just him and I guess a couple of his assistants, too. Um, he, he's been talking for a while. Uh, King Snur's always had some big opinions about the Ordning. Uh, he doesn't like where the fire giants are in it. And he said, well, uh, he, he's always said that he was going to do something about that. Uh, but the ordinings, the ordinings. So I, I think he's crazy. Uh, do you? I have a question. Do you guys know what the ordining is? I do. The hierarchy of giant races. Yes. Oh, very good. Um, so I'll, I'll assume that your characters also are kind of aware of this as well. Then, um, and uh, giant goes. He, he wants fire giants to be the top of the ordining, and he thinks he has a plan, um, but he won't tell anyone, and he won't take any messages. Uh, I, I, I don't even think he's been eating. We haven't been able to deliver food to him. That's my job. I deliver food. This does not explain why he suddenly canceled our trade deals. Um, like I said, he hasn't been talking to anyone. Uh, he handles those usually, and he's just been holed up. Uh, it's been weeks now. Who called from us outside? Did we get a name? Was it Snare or was it someone else? Um, you didn't get a name. It's just a voice. There was is there someone. an alternate route? Apologies. No, yes. Is there an alternate route? Um, uh, he kind of looks... Um, not that I'm aware of. I, I, I think the queen would have... Uh, I think the queen would have used it if, if there was one. Um, but I mean, Snur's got to be eating somehow. There, there might be some somewhere. 
if we had Snur's throne room. Uh, and he kind of tells you, um, basically, if you went past the junk there, um, that's like the Grand Hall, uh, and walking straight from that spot would bring you to the throne room. Uh, that's where the Ettons are trying to dig into. Is the Queen also sealed within? Um, uh, the Queen's uh, the Queen's sealed within as well. Um, we've heard some of her messages. Uh, she she's kind of yelled from some of the other sides of the barrier, um, but. Snur won't let him see her. Let her see him. Hmm. Uh, if, if there was another way to get in, uh, it would it would be some kind of uh, maybe maybe the advisor uh, would know. And where is the advisor? Uh, probably in his chambers. Uh, and he kind of directs you um, up here. Uh, he says to go um, uh, up up here around uh basically he gives you the directions and i can tell you the directions as you're going down there but he tells you where the room is hmm. very well it had, had snow had any strange visitors before this all happened um yeah he, he did he had one um he had one he's been staying in the uh he, he's been staying in the guest room for a while now uh, and he directs you to that location as well. Uh, Snurr's had him locked up in there for quite a bit now. Doesn't seem to trust him. I don't know. Mm. I just I just bring him food. Does he have a name? Um. Yeah, his name's Pete. Mm. Okay. Well, Strange well, name. Sounds like a real scumbag. <laughs> uh, goes, Never met anyone gonna, good with that name. Uh, he just kind of shrugs <laughs> his shoulder and goes, I don't know. Hmm. Very well. You have been of much help. Is there anything in this room that would, might be of use to us? He looks around and he goes, Bread. Yeah, you lie. There was nothing in this room of uh, value, right? Um, the sword kind of speaks speaks to you. Nothing that I have sensed was in this space. It appears to be merely stores. Value so, is um, further up ahead, though. Well, then I suppose we should go further on. Um. All right. Very um, well, Captain Melshira. Have a nice day, pathetic giant. You don't have to be rude, Juggernaut. I uh, do not understand. I'm getting out of here. Uh, and you see still kind of like tear stains on his eyes. Uh, he just begins running heavy foot thunks on the... Uh, uh, heavy foot stunks on the obsidian as he kind of moves out of the space. Uh, as he goes in the distance, he walks by the spot where that fire junk is. And you just hear him kind of yell... Uh, you just hear him kind of yell out, Great job, asshole! Uh, as he runs out the building. Uh, so yeah. Um, I, I looked guys... out of the hallway at the Ettons and I'm like, Good work, Jeb, gentlemen. Keep it up. <laughs> just walk away. <laughs> uh, yay! Thank you! Um, Alright, uh, yeah, this fire giant's no longer here. He's uh, moved further up the hallway. Great juggernaut. Um, you need to do it. Very uh, well. All right, yeah, uh, so you continue. Um, you were directed uh, a couple ways. Uh, you were told um, they didn't, you didn't say anything about this space here, but you can see some heavy doors and a corridor to your right. Um, both of the directions he gave you uh, to Pete or to the advisor, um, they led you up to the split up here. I'm getting no tingles from that room either, right? Um, from the room on your right? Uh, actually, you are, yeah. Juggernaut, do hold up one second. We may want to uh, investigate this room. Very well. Um. All right. Um. Juggernaut, you gonna open the door? I will open the door. Stay back. Thirty hellhounds. How many um, minutes has it been, Mike? Uh, sorry, Mike. Pete. Since our last combat, probably only like like two or three minutes. Yeah, not long. Um, I, I would say that whole the length of that conversation. I that conversation was about. Uh, five minutes or so, I would say. Um, okay. Uh, 
however long that was, yeah. Uh, so you, you guys stepped forward to here. Um, that's not, do you have anything that's, how long does the turret last? Ten. Oh, okay. The turret is turret, turret's like an hour, right? Definite, right? Is it really only uh, an hour? I think it has a cap. I might be wrong. Like uh, you you, you would know better than I. I think it's only 10 minutes. Oh. Okay. Oh, damn. Um, all right, yeah, uh, the room that you're walking into now uh, seems to be some type of, like, council chamber. Uh, it has uh, a big uh, a big table with huge chairs um, on the table, kind of, like, uh, struck into it. You can just see, like, a big map of the surrounding region. Uh, and then uh, a bunch more, kind of, tapestries on the walls uh, depicting very, kind of, uh, again, very, kind of, like, bloody battles of the fire giants. Those chairs look for too small for fire chairs. Uh, no, they're very big. As you can see, they're the same size as your tokens, so they're full. That is actually, true. Even that is kind of small for fire chats, but yeah. uh, imagine them perhaps is slightly larger. Milshira, uh, what should we do now? Uh, I head to where I'm feeling my tingle since... Um, yeah, uh, and... You can feel, uh, from coming from behind this tapestry, um... Juggernaut, if you would examine that tapestry on the far end of the room. Very well. Turret, open. <laughs> um, alright, the turret kind of goes in and opens it, uh, and it can't see, can it? No, no, but it's just going to tear down the thing. Oh, it's just going to tear down the thing. All right, yeah, it rips down the uh, the tapestry. <laughs> shoots the top. <laughs> um, yeah. radical. Uh, and from behind, I got this guy for only ten minutes, so I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, do it. Uh, uh, from behind, you can see a, a kind of a uh, a stone chest, uh, on like a slightly raised pedestal. There. Is this what we seek? Um, yeah, yes. and, and and the sword kind of re replies to you. There are absolutely some valuables within. I'm certain of it. Going through, giving a once over to the pedestal and the chest, doing the classic checking for traps. I check for um, traps. Make a perception check. Not investigation. Um. Yeah, you can make investigation. Sure. Um. All right. Uh, as you're looking, uh, as you're looking over the region, kind of very carefully, trying to examine it, um, you uh, you see within, uh, along the wall behind it, there are some very very small, what looks like you just barely notice, um, some very small. Well, they look like they're holes, but they've been kind of, like, covered over with maybe, like, a, a light plaster or something. Um, it looks like they might be arrow slits that are being disguised to look like part of the wall. Uh-huh. Is there I such a... Oh, thank you, Juggernaut. My turret will go and climb, because it can climb on walls. Uh, and it will just go climb up and just sit in front of the arrow slits. <laughs> All right. Um, we may now open the door in safety. Um, all right, you going to open the chest? I will very carefully, kind of keeping my shield above my face, just in case, kind of looking down on it and open the chest. Um, all right. Uh, as, the, uh, as the chest kind of uh, flies out, uh, the arrows, uh, I'm going to say that... Um, they just automatically hit because he's literally in front of it, um, uh, and the uh, the six arrows um, strike for thirty five points of damage, uh, and you can see that they were also laced with a poison that obviously does not affect your turret. Uh, as the arrows kind of harmlessly strike the bolts, just doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, you hear them kind of ricochet and hit the bottom of the turret. Uh, and, um, yeah, they fall harmlessly as you open the chest. Uh, you find within, um, you find within a number of things. Um, for starters, uh, there are gems within. Uh, there are bags, uh, I'm not gonna get into specifics on numbers and details because it's a one shot, uh, but you find a, a bunch of bags of, of gems and miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous other kind of, uh, treasure and, and some sacks of gold and platinum pieces. Uh, you find six of these very odd, um, uh, they appear to be made of uh, 
they appear to be made of bone, um, and, and there are these almost uh, bone batons, uh, and they have some writing and dwarven runes on the side of them, uh, and the language you assume is giant, uh, and there's six of these things. Uh, there's also a potion of superior healing. Oh my, I read giant. Um, oh, uh, and... Uh, in that case, um, you read the side of it, uh, and they appear to be uh, a baton, uh, and the baton reads, uh, Official business on behalf of King Snur the Fearsome. Any individuals or groups that display these items are safe from attack, uh, are, are safe from attacks. Let me scroll over my thing. Where did, where did my writing go? Why doesn't it have the... Hold on one second. Uh, are safe from attacks by the giants or the giants' allies as long as they take no aggressive action. Excellent. I shall take one and pass two to my allies here. And uh, they're quite large, yes. Um, yeah, these are um, th these are pretty heavy. Uh, they're about uh, two, three feet in length. Um, okay. And they have Am these I... kind of runes written on them in Dorvish. Okay. In that case, I shall not give the turret or the homunculus one. Uh, yeah, uh, naturally. Uh, I'm going to sh shoot the corners of the tapestries of this tapestry um, to see if I can knock it off the wall. Uh, you do so. You see behind it uh, another very large door. I'll do that over here, too. Um, I will now demonstrate a glaring vulnerability as I have used my turret to take that trap. I will now take 30 seconds of casting Mending to undo all of the damage. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, behind this tapestry, uh, you can see a couple of columns. Uh, on the far side, you can see what appears to be a table. It's a minute uh, for uh, casting of Mending. Um, oh, it's a minute. Do you, you need six minutes? <laughs> Not doing that. For five minutes, whatever. Um, or yeah, uh, the table on the um, uh, the back of the room. You see, it's covered in like papers and and various materials. Taking a quick glance, not to eat up too much time. Does there say anything about anything that would give a very clear vibe of crazy master plan? Um, make an investigation check. <clears throat> um, you don't see anything um, that indicates to you uh, there's some writing um, you see a lot of it's in giant and you're kind of uh, leafing through some of it um, and, and some of it you're getting the vibe that like if you really wanted to like sit down with this for a few hours uh, you could like learn something about what he's what he's got going on here but some of this appears to be King Snur's own writing uh, among it though you actually see a map um and that map uh, indicates uh, that in the um, uh, within the uh, the chambers of the advisor, um, you can actually see underground. Uh, there appears to be a secret tunnel that leads into the bed chambers of the uh, the king. Uh, oh, and looking I... at the map, the bed chambers of the king seem to be uh, connected to the throne room by a passage that might you might be able to access. Um, Well, they really should have really checked this room. Would have found the map. <laughs> uh, the the tunnel is very small. It doesn't seem like it's designed for giants to go down. I yeah, wonder no. why giants would include such a small tunnel. They appear to be very unintelligent. Need to make sure that you let the human assassins get in. I suppose giants want some kind of challenge or something to the like. Um, Wait, did we, we want like to check that other down. little room there or no? Nah. Okay. Um, you know from the map, um, actually looking at the map, the advisor's room is actually really close to there. Uh, it's like right through in there. Uh, and then uh, you know that the person he called Pete before uh, was up over to the left over here. Wait, so that other room was the advisor's room? Um, that other room was the advisor's room, but he didn't seem to know about that path, uh, and there's another way to get to it by going up and around uh, to your right. Okay. So we have two options to get there. 
What is our strategy, Melashira? Shall we go after Pete? Yes, we might have to kill him. (laughs) We should look in on this Pete. Has afflicted a snare. He likely has some insight. I'm just really feeling killing Pete. Yeah, at the very least, we should go look into this Pete fellow. He seems suspicious. <laughs> oh, look, All right, a door. Um, is this Pete? <laughs> uh, you can see this door is kind of chained up. Is is this Pete's room? Is this Pete's door? Uh, that's that's the door that you were told about. Yeah. All right. Well, do your work. Um, like I said, the the door uh, this door appears to be locked. It's not just okay. I'll shoot the chains. Um, fair enough. Uh, go I ahead and them. Uh, I will eventually, ask them. Uh, eventually, following uh, eventually, kind of following this pattern, you will get the chains down. Uh, my my powers do acid damage still. Uh, how long does that last? An hour. An hour. Oh wow, that's a good spell. I guess it's Hunter's it Mark, yeah, like I was saying before. Um, all right, nice. Uh, and as you're kind of banging the door, um, you kind of hear a voice come from the other side, and it just calls out, "Who's there?" We're looking for Pete. That's me. Have you come? Who are you? We work for. What do we work for? The Artificers. <laughs> we work for hey, the Artificers. Hey, hey, hey. The Artificers Association. Oh, thank God. Have you come to rescue me? Uh, maybe. Perhaps. Um, good, good. P- please. Thank you. Uh, and uh, with some time. Um, With some time, the individual, uh, uh, I'll get the door open for you here. Uh, <laughs> let me... I'm really hoping that if he has a token, it's just Pete's face. <laughs> uh, I just realized that I had the wrong token for this guy. So as you go into the room, um, uh, this individual is there, uh, he's staying in the room, but I don't have a token for him right now. Um... And as you uh, as you walk into the room, you can see someone that looks a lot like me uh, standing there, um, and uh, he kind of instead is he's wearing kind of like a, what looks to be a noble's uh, a noble's garb, uh, and kind of walks and goes, oh, "Thank God you're here. I've been trapped in here for for weeks and weeks. The, the king's snur has gone mad." Did what happened with snur? Um, the interior of this space, uh, as much as he seems like imprisoned here, this is like a really nice and lavish room um you can see all manner of um uh, you, you can see like a really beautiful uh it looks like an owl bear skin rug in the room uh you, you can see like a whole bunch of uh really nice uh beds along the left side um that are like uh, feathered and and beautifully put together um it's sized for giants uh obviously not sized necessarily for someone like this uh, but, it, but it's a very nice interior a, a warm fire uh and the whole interior of the space is warm, but this one has a, a nice kind of fireplace uh, over on the side of it that's kind of burning. Um, and um, you ask him uh, what happened with Snur, uh, and this individual resp- re- replies, "Yeah, King Snur. Um, he, God, I don't. I have no idea. Um, we were supposed to conduct some business. Um, uh, he had asked me to pick up a couple of things for him around here and there." Um, uh, I guess he was he was working on some uh, he was working on some stuff needed some materials, uh, so I, I you know I, I came to bring him here but uh, he decided he didn't uh, I, I don't know he he's gone mad he he didn't trust me I don't know why. Can I roll an insight check on Pete? Um, yeah, absolutely. Seventeen. Um, there's definitely uh, something a little bit off about this dude. Uh, what quite, materials did you gather for him? Um, just some, um, just some metals, uh, things like that. What kind of metals? Uh, steels. Uh, uh just some really, really high uh, quality forged steels. He needed some gemstones, uh, so we're getting some of those. Usually they provide their own, but I guess he needed some higher quality ones. So we're bringing some of those. Um, you know, I'm just a merchant. Uh, just here, kind of. I would also like to insight Pete here. Yeah, go ahead. 
um, this person is uh, doing their uh, is doing their best to like come up with something on the fly, uh, but they are just completely lying through their teeth. Uh, and uh, Pete kind of continues on uh, and and is going. Um, but thank God the uh, the Artificers Commission is here uh, because without them, we'd all be uh, we'd all be in for a rough time. He says. We who. Oh, Shira, did... I am entering into the last minute of my abilities. <laughs> uh, oh, us, uh, collectively. I've done business with the... Uh, are, are you kidding me? The, the Artificers, Interdimensional Artificers uh, Consortium? I've done business with them on, on many occasions. What so you... really, you'll be really you'll be doing them a favor if you. What are you really doing here? Dying. I want to talk to Pete. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Um, and uh, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Die, Pete. Die. <laughs> I'm gonna just punch him with my iron fists. Um. All right. Sixteen. Da -da -ba -ba. Uh, just hits Pete. Oh, With no. non-magical damage. Um, uh, six, uh, 16 as you punch Pete does nothing. Uh, and as you touch him, his head kind of turns down to the side, but he seems unaffazed, just the kind of movement of force. And he looks back at you. His skin shifts, turning into the form of a tiger. Uh, as he says, how did you see through my disguise? Oh. <laughs> Never mind. It appears this is an ally after all. This is not an ally. Oh. Juggernaut, enter extermination mode. Uh, but I roll... just exited extermination mode. <laughs> um. Uh, roll for what? initiative. <laughs> there's just a I, there was just a Rakshasa in this room, um, and I realized. Wait, really? Is yeah, that was the, the I, this is part of the adventure. Like I named him Pete, obviously, but that guy was just in this room, uh, who was just a, a, a diplomat that was here uh, that King Snur has been distrusting of and is locked up in the room. Uh, that's actually this guy's story. Um, oh, so he was not really lying to us, huh? Uh, he was lying to you for sure, but. He's a diplomat that was actually a Rakshasa. Uh, uh, and he was also going to try and uh, go with you guys and use you. So you can tell he was shifty. Uh, and let me add him an initiative roll. Um, uh, as you punch him in the face, it <laughs> appears to have no effect. Uh, and Gasp. He's going to change up the music. Right. Now, uh, the first to act in this initiative is going to be you, Malshira. Uh, what do you do? Oh, let me get rid of some of these older ones. Malshira shall lunge forward and swing forth with Tyrion. Um, uh, 18 and 19 hit. Excellent. Um, for oh my god! Well, he wouldn't ignore that. He can ignore the acid. Uh, oh the, uh, right, low level spell. This is true. Uh, Rip. still a lot of damage though. <laughs> Sixteen is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, all right, great. Uh, anything uh, else on your turn, Melchior? Have Delilah scoot back over here. Uh -huh. You know what? No. Learn my lesson, stay next to the juggernaut, and toss a caustic kiss towards Pete. Aw, oh, Pete, you got kissed. Uh, for how much damage did I get kissed for? Six acid. Oh, nice. Uh, the caustic kiss kind of flies out uh, and, and gets him right on the cheek. Uh, it kind of singes, uh, and his backwards Rakshasa hands, uh, he kind of glares at you angrily and goes, Man, that really hurt. Um... Anything else on your turn? That will do it. Uh, Hob. I shoot him. All right. You know what Rakshasas can't ignore? <laughs> uh, are you Piercing good? Piercing from a good aligned creature. Are, are you good? 
Oh yeah, I was gonna spare the dying on those giants. Uh oh no! <laughs> uh, you hit the Rakshasa as your crossbow bolts uh kind of pierce into the Rakshasa's body. Um, you see they leave incredible gaping wounds, like pulling apart his form in places. Uh, as you strike for fifty damage. Oh. Oh jeez. Uh, uh, anything else on your turn? I think I'm all set. <laughs> uh, Juggernaut. Uh, at this point, my shield of faith runs out, and my turret scribbles back up into me. Uh, oh no! I will, bah, bah, I will walk forward the Rakshasa and say, "You literally cannot harm me," and I will grapple it. Oh jeez! Uh, uh, all right, you kind of grab onto the Rakshasa, uh, and you got him grappled. I'm not even gonna roll for him because it's impossible I'm to beat him. Gonna move him over to here. Uh, all right, you drag him over to here. Um, and I have no other weapon. Uh, because I can't have my mace out if I'm grappling. Uh, uh, shield. So I will just punch him with the uh, hand I'm grappling him with. Can I do that? Yep. Sure. Oh. Uh, you, you no, missed. you can't. <laughs> uh, you missed. It actually would have done no damage, but you miss. Um, all right. Uh, and well, on the rock. Fair. Oh, I could have bludgeoned him with my shield. Improvised magical weapon. Oh, that'd be pretty good. Uh, I'd count that. Uh, the... Rakshasa, on his turn, uh, is going to look at you, and he goes... Uh, he kind of, like, dinks your armor a couple times, like, flicking with his finger, and he goes, yeah, I don't think I can hurt you. <laughs> uh, and then he looks, but I think you can hurt them. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. I was going to be proficient in these. Uh-oh. Uh, 17. Oh, 17 does get you there. Uh, the Rakshasa needed that one to work. <laughs> um... And that's all for his turn, unfortunately, Malashira. Oh, jeez. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> well, you let's hope whatever you this is is concentration. As I'm gonna, I'm gonna boop this boy. Oh, uh, that's I'm gonna hit twice. <laughs> This is not going to be a Rakshasa for long, folks. Uh, uh, he is not in great shape at this point. Uh, Pete's looking pretty beaten up. Um, Don't worry. I'm sure my little darling will kiss that all better. Uh, um, and he goes, actually, those really, those really don't feel good. I would rather if you didn't. Uh, and he's not in great shape. The burn is just passion, don't worry. Uh. Wait, why are we killing this thing again? It is an evil fiend. Hub? He doesn't, he doesn't really seem all that bad. Well, oh. I hit with this one for 26 damage. Oh. Uh, oh, he's still hanging on. Uh, and he looks now. Is there anything he can do? Uh, he looks towards... I think it's my turn, actually, isn't it? Uh, wait. You're right, it is. I'm sorry. It's okay. I am so sorry. I dodge. Alright, you dodge. Uh, what's he gonna do? He does not have a lot of choices oh, here. I would also drag him away from my ally. Uh, I need you to make me another wisdom saving throw. Uh, as he looks at you. What did he say? Uh, he looks at you and he says, Please, just protect me with everything you have. All right. Sounds fine. Uh, he suggests... Friends, I will destroy you now. He suggests that you protect him. I will release him. Um, all right. Uh, that's going to bring us to... Um, Hop. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's Malashira. Ah. Oh. I stride forth towards him. <laughs> and let's, uh... Let's give him the good old-fashioned double... Uh, that's gonna hit. Both or just the 27? Uh, both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Pete is slain. <laughs> no! <laughs> I was uh, so ready for my arrow catching shield to catch Yeah, that's, that, that was his plan, uh, unfortunately. Uh, 
it did not work out for him. Uh, as you guys, Pete's not very good against you guys. Uh, Reparoni in pepperonis. Well, that's dead with. We can go back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. All right, we should probably search this room. Hmm? Um, as you're looking around the room, um, go ahead and make an investigation check. Uh, who's... I was going to recommend perhaps we take our sweet ass time, search the room, and take a quick breather. That's a great idea. Um, in that case, uh, we are going to take a brief break. Uh, we will be back in between five and ten minutes. What's the timer for, Jeremy? I think it's five. We'll be back in five minutes, uh, where we will continue our delve through the Hall of the Fire Giant King. Um, see you all very soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue on now with our adventure without further ado, uh, to which I ask you, are you guys like taking any rests or doing anything like that? What's your what's your play? I know you mentioned you were looking around the room uh, oh, and just murdered Pete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just murdered. Uh, you just murdered Pete. He got what he deserved. Uh, one could say uh, I felt like he was dealt with unjustly, but far be it from me. Um, it's okay. There's like a clause in the whole good alignment thing about demons and devils and stuff. Mm. Well, guys, guys. What if we give him a second chance, we revivify him, he joins us in our adventure, and doesn't betray us? No. It's a little late for a revivify at this point. I'm not uh, saying no, I'm just saying... Oh, no, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't the immediate moment after. If you want to revivify Pete, uh, you are welcome to do so. I pour holy water on his corpse. Uh, <laughs> it, it fizzles and burns, and he is sent <laughs> to the nine hells where he belongs. Um, so you investigated the room. I believe you rolled a 20, right? Yes. Uh, as you're looking around, uh, you were kind of getting the vibe from your sword again, like, oh yeah, gems. Gems up in here. And um, you look on Pete's body, and he's carrying some very nice gems. Uh, very beautiful polish, a couple of sapphires, a very fine ruby. Um, uh, and as you're kind of examining things, there's not a lot in here. There's some beds. Uh, there's the table with, like, the chairs. Um, and you look over at one of the chairs. Uh, and Sorry, I'm about to sneeze, but I can't quite get it out. Look at a light. Well, it's gone now. Uh, so, so in one of the chairs, um, you find that there's a small kind of hinge on it, uh, and as you lift it up, you find within there's like a small treasure, uh, a small treasure hoard in here with a bunch more gold uh, and uh, two strange-looking potions, uh, as well as a whole big pile of spell scrolls. Hmm. Seems worthless. What the these are potions and spell scrolls. What do these spell scrolls appear to be? Um, reading over them, uh, kind of giving them uh, a cursory glance, uh, you identify Zone of Truth, True Seeing, Darkness, uh, Fourth Level Cure Wounds, and the spell Symbol. Oh my. Okay, well I had those two. Uh... They are useful to us. And then I look yeah. at the potions. What uh, do any of us know the spell identify? Uh, do any of you know identify? No one no. have on the ready are two very different things, unfortunately. Very well. ritual. Well, About you are ritual. you are an alchemist, uh, Perhaps you can identify them without the spell somehow. Yeah, if you if you want to make an arcana yeah. check, uh, you're welcome to do so. What about maybe the, uh, a check using his alchemist's tools, alchemist supplies? Uh, 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 I'll give you a proficiency bonus, sure. Well, actually, he's got expertise in alchemist supply. There is oh, that. pretty spicy. Uh, yeah, let's use that core feature. Show it off. And this is what you too can do when you're an artificer that's an alchemist. Wait, alchemists are clearly the better option here. Um... All right. Uh, as you're looking over them, um, one of them you recognize um, pretty quickly. You identify it as a potion of mind reading. Uh, it's kind of a swirling, uh, kind of a swirling gray potion. A little bit of smoke kind of coming out of it. Uh, the other one, um, it is a a brilliant kind of gleaming blue. And looking at it, it's really purely distilled, and it's of uh, it seems to be of a, a pretty impressive quality. But you can't quite figure out what the potion is. Um, one of them you've definitely identified as a potion of mind reading. Well, this is definitely a potion of mind reading, but this one definitely has high quality to it. I don't think I've seen something like it, at the very least, a very long time, if ever. Um, yeah, as you're kind of like uh, moving the bottle around and, and kind of letting it shift in the in the glass, it's very like thick and, and almost syrupy. We talking double C thick or triple C thick? Um, like so many C's. Oh my! My God! It's like uh, if iron were made liquid, almost. 
kind of a brilliant okay. pillar. There we go. Dummy thick potion. Uh, and uh, potion of mind reading. Uh, Excellent. Um, so we um, continue to the yeah, advisor's yeah. office. Very good. Very good. Um, Did anyone else get the uh, names of the scrolls down? Nope. We can't cast them, so it doesn't matter. Fair enough. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, if we, we can cast, cast cure wounds, uh, you can use the you can use the fourth level cure wounds. Yeah. There we go. All right. Fair enough. Um. In that case, you continue on to the advisor's quarters. Uh, you move up uh, if you want to move yourselves along the uh, along the map. Bah. 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 Uh, and to the right. Yep. Bah. Great. Bah. Uh, bah. Bah. Oh, uh, there's a guy here. Yep, uh, and as you come around the corner, you can see a fire giant kind of standing guard right up ahead. Uh, if you want to not have gotten quite so far as to have just, like, walked right next to him, uh, oh. you can... S All right. Uh, the fire giant kind of... Uh, the fire giant kind of looks at you, uh, and he goes, uh, You must be the ones that... Uh, you must be the ones that Gorm told me about. He said he threw a rock at you. Didn't even phase you. He's, yes, got a bunch, he's got a bunch of rocks next to him. He seemed Please. to be a bit presumptuous on this. Now, listen to me, you. Gorm's going to be coming back here in a little bit, uh, and he is bringing a retinue. I recommend you get out of here. We have D's, I say, point, holding up the, the, the stick thing. The baton. And, and, uh, and you hear uh, marching from the corridor above. Uh, you see... Um, a, kind of a, a goblin servant walking out, uh, and additionally, you see like a whole bunch of kid fire giants running out. Um, you see what looks like, <clears throat> um, you see what looks like to be this like terrible, uh, disfigured-looking hill giant. Uh, and following with him, you can see like running down the corridor is a pack of hellhounds uh, that were kind of up here. Uh, a couple more fire giants, uh, and you see the one from before that big fire giant that you. Uh, had left out, kind of comes, and he goes, uh, and he kind of comes up, he, just, he runs down the corridor and yells, all right, we're ready to get him! Uh, and he kind of, as he sees the stick kind of hold up and, uh, he kind of, kind of holding up in the air as you're waving it, uh, he kind of calls out, where did you get that? Well, as we were trying to say, we're here for diplomatic purposes. Yes, I would like to engage in this extended brawl. <laughs> um, the two young fire giants kind of look over. Uh, we're gonna punch him, right? We're gonna we're gonna give him the punches. Some of the hellhounds are there, like chomping at the bit. <laughs> uh, you see the big kind of ugly stone giant come over. All right, get him, boys. Uh, and then the fire giant is like, "Hold up, hold up." Wait a minute. You brought children. What is wrong with you? Uh, the children kind of look at you. Uh, one of them goes, "I can fight." Uh, the other one looks at you. Yeah, I can. I can fight. I, I, you I brought. It's like bringing a knife to a, like a, I'm a crossbow like fight. bringing sheep or to a, a joust. I'm or sure you'll uh, This this fire giant in front of you says, "I think it's more like bringing ten kids that are really big to a fight, and then they die." Um. Do you really want to have the blood of your children on your hands? It's not on ours if you send them after us. Uh, they kind of look at you and go, Oh, not my kids, and well, we can't touch you anyway. You have those batons. Excellent. You cannot touch us? No, hey, do not. They cannot touch us if, they att if you attack them. You are being presumptuous. It says it on the bo baton. It literally says, if you take a hostile action, they are permitted to hurt you. Very well, the great Bayou, Hivaja, Fuskipi. <laughs> um, I will heed your wisdom. So if you're gonna go meet with King Snur, maybe talk some sense into him, tell him to start. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, you artificers are kind of scary. I told uh, Some people told him that he should have it wasn't me specifically. The queen told him he should have kept up the artificer deal uh, and that it would bring ruin on us. And it seems like you guys are kind of that ruin. So maybe talk some sense into him. We have heard this before. Indeed. Uh, all right, all right. 
I literally nothing I can do. So uh, he just kind of gestures for you guys to like walk freely about the place. Do you need like a guide? Uh, the advisor's chamber is down here, correct? That's right. Yeah, I think we're all set for now. All right, all right. Quite helpful. Uh, you guys kind of march. Um, you see the, the big hill giant kind of looks, but I was going to sick my dogs on them. Uh, and well, if I just, ah, shut up. Uh, you uh, see here, there's another big kind of pile of junk uh, that looks like the, uh, that looks like your dear friend has set up to prevent you from going through. Uh, but you move past that and here you see a bunch of gnolls in a banquet hall. Uh, and as you, uh, and, and as they kind of enter, they all kind of turn up, they stop their feasting and eating and look at you uh, and begin kind of uh, angrily running over at you uh, in a pack. <laughs> Do the nose have to obey the batons? Uh, you yell down the hallway. Uh-huh. Uh, the fire giant goes, I don't think they know about it. Well, unfortunately... <laughs> as the gnolls begin moving down the corridor uh, in this group um, uh, I am going to I am going to have them roll a save see if one of them uh, gets lucky boop, boop, boop. 3, 4, 5, 6 7, 8 2 of them saved oh nice 2 of them save uh, is, which... is that enough? <laughs> Uh, no, the gnolls actually have a tiny bit, uh, enough health to just barely not die. So all but two hey, of these gnolls. that's perfect. Well, Those two get acid. <laughs> um, oh no! <laughs> uh, as these two gnolls are going to also make dexterity saving throws, let's see if their luck holds out. Oh! Uh, oh! oh! One lives uh, and begins charging down the corridor straight towards you, Juggernaut. I allow him to hit me. <laughs> All right, he's going to make an attack against you. And he goes, uh, he kind of calls out, This is for my brethren! Uh, goes I'm ready to action for when he gets uh, oh. Goes and bites you! Oh! <laughs> oh, damn. He hits you for seven points of damage. This gnoll's furious bite sinks into your shoulder, Juggernaut, and leaves a piercing mark in your as-of-yet-unmarred armor. You know, that looked like it should not have helped. <laughs> <laughs> I grab it, hold it in the air, and then pfft, just down. That's enough with the half damage. Um, that looked like it should not have hit, but somehow it did. <laughs> but but fate was on his side. Uh, and The term is miraculous. Uh, and uh, with I that... I have been wounded. We must retreat. <laughs> we have clearly <laughs> entered an extremely dangerous area. Uh, the gnolls are uh, the gnolls are slain. Congratulations. Um, there is so, no hope. If I have been harmed, you will surely be destroyed. Uh, and you see a very kind of uh, chubby kind of dwarf walks out of this room. Uh, he kind of goes. Uh, he kind of calls out, "What's all that racket?" Uh, and he looks out. He sees just the burn bodies of a whole bunch of gnolls uh, kind of steps, uh, kind of takes a few couple steps over to here, uh, looks at the group of you, and he goes, hello there. Greetings, hello. I am Juggernaut version 27.06b. Great, I'll be with you in just a moment, okay? Of course. Uh, and he steps backwards into this room, you see he opens it, and then you hear the sound of is a whole bunch of like locks and various bolts uh, sealed over this door as he walks into this little chamber. It, all right, hold on. He came out of this room. Was this the the advisor room, or is... um, the room or is that's it... uh, the advisor's personal chambers are this one, uh, and this appears to be like his like work room. Uh, I'll, I'll, to... I'll open. I'll open that door. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, the one that he just locked himself into. Doug and why don't you take care of that? Very well. I would like to kick down the door. All right, go ahead and make me a strength check for real this time. I failed. <laughs> yeah, you, once more. Uh, you go and to kick down the door. Uh, it barely budges. It's made of a solid steel, and it looks like he's put a couple of like bolts and stuff. It's going to take some time to really break this thing down. Uh, and on the other side of the door, um, you can just hear him kind of now calling out, Yeah, right, like I'm going to let you in here. You can go in over my dead body. 
what's the what's the the door frame made out of? Um, the door frame it's uh, stone over here on the rights of it, uh, the right sides of it, and the frame itself it's it's like a solid metal door. Uh, <laughs> I just take out a hammer and just tap the wall and just. Uh, uh, and he goes, yeah, over my dead body as the door, um, as the wall falls to dust around him, um, you catch him quite literally, um, quite literally with his pants down. Uh, as you see, he's in the process of putting on his full plate mail and greaves. Uh, um, and he's like, just kind of like turns over and looks at you like a deer caught in the headlights. Uh, as... Uh, he's like halfway through lacing up one leggings, uh, and you just actually see his just bare butt before you. Uh, he goes, you he may just... want to put on some pants. Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does not get a surprise round, unfortunately. Uh, as he is. I'm having a very bad return. <laughs> we should take another break. Um, oh, it didn't roll it correctly, but we'll get him on there nonetheless. Oh. And uh, that's going to bring us to Dude, Omi. Can you remove the, the, the lighting so we can see in the room? Oh, yeah. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I'm just going to remove the door, but assume that you have the whole wall there uh, mm -hmm. down as well. Uh, and he kind of turns around, immediately abandoning, putting on his heavy plate mail, uh, and just whips around and chucks a uh, and chucks a dagger at you, uh, Hob. Boop, 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 boop. Or I'm sorry, uh, he fires his light crossbow. I'm gonna get a dagger. Misses. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, the light crossbow bolt uh, uh, flies past uh, towards you and collects into your shield and just goes, shite! Uh, and runs forward, pulls out his short sword, is going to make now two melee attacks at you as he drops the, the crossbow. Oh, damn! Oh! Oh my god! Uh, that's against you, Hob. Oh boy. Um... <laughs> Uh, and yep, I need you to make two yep, constitution saving yep, throws. This is against me. Is there oh. no I, I do have a point of order. And that is, traditionally, extra damage that is included on a saving throw to an attack does not double on a crit. Oh, that's true. Yep. That's yeah. just the verse. I'm with you Was on that. it con saves? Uh, yep. Um, but, so... his, but his sneak attack damage also does get you. Uh, because he has advantage, uh, because he's acting before you in initiative. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so 7 plus 9, or... 7 plus 9 is, uh, 16. Plus... Oh. 15 is... 31. Plus, um, uh... Plus another 17. I'm unconscious. I mean, there's no way, right? Uh, uh yeah, that's, um... That's 725. Uh, the first attack... The first attack actually uh, hit you for 65 damage. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, he got the benefit of assassination without having to use his assassination feature. He only got me by two points. Uh, he downed you with the first hit? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so then he just, he just barely gets it. Oh, wow. Uh, in that case, uh, yeah, you see he reaches out, uh, he fires a crossbow bolt, misses, and then makes two sharp stabs uh, into Hob, who just gets taken down in one hit. Uh, and he looks a little impressed with himself uh, and says, uh, looks at the group of you and just goes, and you better back off or you'll be next, uh, as he's gesturing pantsless uh, with his poisoned uh, blade before you. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps the most intimidating thing <laughs> in the history of D&D. &D. Uh, um, Malashira, what do you do at this terrible situation? Oh. You know, you may want to see a cleric about that. Uh, uh, artifices aren't exactly versed in that area, though I do have a lesser restoration if uh, you need. But uh, that's quite rude. Juggernaut, if you could keep him busy one second. Uh, I'm gonna oh, well. drag my unconscious ally back. 
And I'm gonna cure that boy up some. <laughs> Alright, use cure wounds. For a sweet 16. Um, Alright, you're oh. back up to 16 health, uh, and he's in... I'm gonna to kill this fucking dwarf. <laughs> you should. Uh, and I will have Delilah shoot him a kiss, which... I should have named it something else given this circumstance, but uh, alas. Uh, unfortunately, it's too late. You've already committed, uh, and you hit him for 16 points of damage. Um, uh, just 11. That's a 16 hit. Oh, my apologies. That was the cure wounds I was looking at. Um, excellent. Uh, all right, he takes that damage. Um, anything else on your turn? That will do it. Juggernaut. Juggernaut will... Walk forward. And so this area, I'm wondering how big of an area an opening is there? Um, in this room? No, I, the, of the wall. It's only about 10 feet, right? Because that's the area of pass wall. Yeah, oh yeah, it's basically right. this... Whole, stone shape, it was like a... The whole square, place. since the door is open and the whole square it's is gone. Like, see here. Yeah, basically that little spot. Um, as well as this is gone because of the stone shape. Containment, and I'm going to cast enlarge. And uh, that's enhance. Oh, ability. <laughs> what I meant is enlarge, reduce. Activate containment protocol. On I'm him or to... on you? On me. Okay. Blah. You activate containment protocol. Then he can now get not get out. And that's all I got. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I was saying that the wall over here is also... Like, the door is open, but then the wall is open because he just put a hole in the wall. So there's two entrances oh. in the space. If that changes how you want to play your turn, you can do something else. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I guess I'll just grapple him then. That's fair. That seems like the right move. Uh oh. Uh, Ah, I made myself big again, accident. He is ah, grappled. You, you grapple him. You, you gotta, you gotta hold on him. I'm gonna make you little. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got him. Oh, oh, right. you got him. Right. done did it. How do I get I little? Punch him once for some damage. Five. Uh, you, you hit him for five. Um, <laughs> and uh, that all for your turn? That'll be it. And he goes. Uh, he just kind of goes. Let go of me. Let go. Uh, and he's going to try and escape your grapple. Which he will... Boop, boop. No. No. No, sir. Um, not that much higher than him, but it looks like it, as you just have him completely firmly rooted in place. Um, that's his action to try and escape your grapple. Um, that's all he's got. Unfortunately for him, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Malashira. I'm sorry, it should have been Hob first. Hob. I yep. get up and I move over to here. And I'm like, you, you made a very big mistake. Perhaps we could talk this out. Maybe, but not before I get a few hits on you. <laughs> 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 and I will, uh, I will throw my dagger at him. All right. Uh, for eight points oh. of damage. Then I throw it again. Oh, what? Well, <laughs> Six him and then comes right back out of him. Uh, oh, man. There's a 16 uh, hit. Yeah, that all hits. Okay. Wait, you can do three? No, no, no. I actually oh, no, you just roll the next damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and That's then, a total of 16 damage. And then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll fucking quick draw my, my cro hand crossbow because I'm a crossbow expert. Shoot him again. <laughs> oh, uh, I miss. That one misses, unfortunately, as it uh, ricochets around the chamber a few times. Uh, it moves into precious objects in the space. Looks like this is his bedroom. Uh, you see it hit like a picture of what looks like it might have been his wife uh, over uh, on the... Uh, table maybe his maybe is just his whole family his kids too uh and um oh me uh, at this point uh has kind of like let himself fall slack in your hands uh as we're moving now to malashira and he's kind of calling out oh point made point made we could come to some type of agreement perhaps uh malashira uh, i will 
come forth and do the classic blade to the third. Oh. Very well. You oh, can okay, understand cool. why we're a bit cautious here. And I'll tell Delilah to hold off on kissing him for now. Uh, or yeah, Delilah's there, kind of like hovering next to him, little uh, gem-like wings floating in the air. Uh, and he kind of goes, So what can I do for ya? As he's doing that in the background, I put away the two weapons I had drawn, and just a heavy crossbow comes up. Pointed at him. <laughs> you can tell us what the hell has been going on with King Snur. Actually, I get right up to him and put it right up against his head. Uh, he goes, "No, I wouldn't just. Uh, I wouldn't just betray King Snur. Oh, okay." King Snur's a ambitious individual. He thinks he's going to take over the Ordning. Uh-huh. Continue. Why did he break off his deal with the artificers? I guess he's been using some of the supplies uh, to, to build a, a, new, uh, a new axe for himself. He has a very... Uh, he always had a nice axe, but he wanted one that had flames on it. Um, and he's been forging for quite some time. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, it sounds more like he needs help from the artificers, not to break off his dealings with them. I couldn't agree more. Help him. He's right down. Uh, well, he's not down there. You go down there, and then there'll be a couple of turns, and he gives you another set of directions as he points to a very well-concealed uh, kind of trap door. He's been having me bring him food and told me not to speak too much about what he's been working on. He doesn't want it until he's finished. doesn't want it revealed. Is this... All right, I'm going to insight this guy. Uh, this sort of like an intentions insight check. Um... I mean, he's a big, he's a dwarf. Uh, he's very clearly evil, uh, and he's really wants to not be here, uh, and is hoping that you guys will let him go. That's your insight. Um, tough to tell whether or not he's being truthful, but he does, I mean, he's backed up by the fact that he points to a trap door, and there is, like, a human-sized tunnel that seems to go, like, underneath here that you can walk through. All right. We should shackle him. That seems to be a good idea. Does anyone have shackles? How about you just turn me over to the giants out there? Very well. That can't hurt. Um. This man betrayed your uh, baton procedures. Um, they look kind of down at him. Um, and they... Uh, one awesome. of the giants kind of nods solemnly, um, and he says, Can we get some pants on him at least? Whatever. Also, he has been be he has been betraying our been bringing food to your king without your knowledge. Uh, he looks over. Uh, he, he looks over the giants. I'm just working for the good of the group here. You don't need to, in particularly, be mad about me for... Uh, and uh, the giants kind of like put... Uh, strong arms on either one of his shoulders uh, and they begin kind of like uh, walking him down the corridor uh, away uh, and one of them just goes uh, it, the hill giant and that fire giant that are kind of guiding him now I uh, just said the hill giant says we'll deal with this one good uh, uh, and so um, yeah there's a tunnel I feel as though we could have literally told the giants anything and they would have bitten this is strange. There is an odd disturbance in the middle of this hallway. Indeed. Is there? Yeah, you moved the door just into the hallway. <laughs> oh, wait. Whoops a daisies. Okay, if, if no one has a problem with it, I'm going to use that cure wounds for scroll we found. Ah, yes, to uh, fourth level cure wounds. Um, but wait, what if we perhaps take a short rest? That may be a good idea. Sure, uh, yeah, whatever. The, the tunnel is pretty safe. Uh, you guys can climb down into the tunnel uh, and just chill for a to while. To be frank, Pete, I feel safe here. Fair enough. <laughs> I could take a long rest. 
<laughs> it would that's be a, fine. This is actually in true. the hallway. That's actually true. Do we want to go for the long rest? No, it's just a short rest. Let me spend my hit die. I'm healed. That Noel will fucking pay. He already paid, he's dead. Oh. <laughs> um, not until you get Ray's dead can he actually pay the way that you want him to. I mean, we could have brought him back. Well. Okay, so it looks like we don't get our turrets back on a short rest. Um, but you can use your... Uh, use the spell, the spell slot yeah, for spell it. Slot. Yeah, spell yeah, slot. Yeah. Does, um... The base alchemist get anything back on the short rest, guys? I don't like believe really do. so. Like anything. Definitely I guess you can switch out your cantrip. For right cantrip for the job. Guys, I'm wearing a new cantrip. Oh, what are you getting? I'm going to switch out light for ray of frost. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, the, the wall is... The room you find that this chamber is heavily lit with wall sconces and torches and wall lava. All right, now that I've used all of my hit dice, I'm back at full. <laughs> I think I'll switch out Ray of Frost for Mage. <laughs> that was very good. For which one? Mage hand, just in case we come across more chests, because yeah. jewels are pretty. What is that sword you have? It's a pretty sword that looks like an emerald. There we and go. It, and it speaks to him. Um, so you guys go down the uh, the tunnel? Yeah. Yes. All right. Dude. Let me drag you down way away. Oh, no. I got left Give behind. Give the whole ba 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 uh, Oh, no. You got, you got dropped. That's not where you're supposed to be. Yeah, well, where is this? We're working on it. Not well, there. Not, not, not there either. Oh, oh my. We're outside of the map. Oh, oh hey, look, oh. here it is. <laughs> got, it, got it in five. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> it kept dropping you while I was trying to bring you over. Um, all right, you're in King Snur's bedroom. Um, but basically, if you want to be at the Hall of King Snur, you can be. Uh, there's some other rooms around We should here. check his, his chambers first for anything useful. Um, uh, yeah, um, investigating the chambers... Um, Looking around, I mean, you can find more uh, kind of gold and, and treasures and things of that nature, um, but you don't find anything of particular value uh, in the space uh, other than just, you know, material, like, wealth. Okay, well, we'll take all of the material wealth we can carry. Of yep. Yeah. Uh, do, did one of you have a bag of holding? No. No, I don't. Nope. Wait. Three artificers and not a single bag of holding among them. You guys nope. expect for combat. I also didn't take... I I'm not taking any of this stuff. I don't care. Um, all well, right. We have to bring back a bounty for the artificers. I pawn off all my gold to either of the other players to steal more gem. Well, whatever. We'll have you. You are going to be the one carry. Um. Oh, oh, Pete. Pete. Yes. I want to search his room for secret doors. Um. All right. Go ahead and make a. Uh... Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Actually, Malish, Malishira, with your previous in investigation check, you saw a secret door that you didn't think was overly important, um, so you just kind of ignored it, because it wasn't where you were going. Uh, Alright, now make a secret uh, investigation check, check or not. You kind of be a perception? Uh, yeah, it's fine. You perceive a secret door. Uh, it seems to... Uh, it leads it's, to the tunnel we just came out of. Uh, yeah, it would, seems to lead one to the tunnel that you just came out with, and also, there seems to be a secret door leading downwards into a deeper part of this space. Mm, really? That, that... that is a whole nother map and a whole nother part of this adventure that we don't have time for. Part. Um, well, we better go down there. <laughs> um... It seems important down there. We definitely should. Yeah, there might be some like drow or something, or perhaps a uh, perhaps a hydra or a dragon. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, you'll have to explore that a bit later. 
All very right. well. Let us keep moving. Let us go confront King Snur. Oh, right. Indeed. I'm supposed to lead the way. My apologies. Stay um, behind me, allies. Which way do we go? Up. Rap. Uh, Rap. Uh, one second. Um, this is a very weird lighting area. Oh, is it lit? Is, it there's... just stops right here. There's, yeah, there's a line here. Um, oh, yep, yeah, that's correct. Um, because you're on the back side, you can see this appears to be uh, the back side of another tapestry that's uh, hiding another kind of passageway. Oh. Uh, and you're kind of coming out through the opposite of it, emerging into... King Snow's throne room. Kind of. The Grand Hall. Um... As you step out upwards and into the Grand Hall, um, you can see kind of beautifully carved uh, columns. Uh, you push the tapestry aside, more of these really like uh, tapestries depicting just fire uh, fire giant victories. Um, you can see like the big pile of junk um, kind of sp spread out and laid before you. Uh, you can still hear the sounds on the other side of the distant Ettons trying to bury in from their side of it. Um, and... Uh, forward um you can hear what sounds like um uh, you can hear what sounds like a, a forge hammer kind of ringing uh and you can see uh the distant throne room up ahead um king snur uh is kind of standing there's a couple of fire giant uh guards that are also just kind of like moving around the space uh, one of them kind of crosses over to here uh and looks out uh and he kind of says something to snur uh kind of mumbled uh and uh snur who's in the middle of kind of uh, clanging something with his hammer, it rings out. Ding! Ding! Uh, he just kind of uh, kind of calls out with his back to you. Uh, and you hear the voice again, the same way that you heard it when you were outside, uh, as this fire giant kind of goes back uh, to whatever task he was doing over here. Um, and you hear the voice call, Come forward! Seems Very well. <laughs> Um, and as you get to here, um, you can see that King Snur's throne room is a uh, a mishmash of strange um, uh, of strange objects. Uh, you can see he's basically turned it into something of a workshop. Um, all around, uh, all, all around in the space, um, the throne is just kind of like uh, pushed aside and moved to the corner. Um, you can see the big forge where he's kind of lighting. Uh, he strikes his hammer down, uh, and you see as some of the torchlight, um, the two torches here on either side of you, uh, go out for a moment, and the fire just kind of oof, zips across the room uh, and cascades forward into uh, the blade that he's kind of working on, and he kind of holds it up uh, with his back to you, and he goes. Ah, that's it. I've been working on this one for a little bit now. And he turns around to look at you. Uh, and for starters, you are uh, you are struck uh, by the gems in his crown. Uh, you in particular, uh, Malashira. Uh, his crown is incredibly beautiful. Um, and it, it seems to be kind of curling upwards. There's like a variety of different gems that are in it. It also seems to be thrumming with some power. Uh, a power which very quickly looks similar to you, Juggernaut. It appears he's wearing a headband of intellect. And as you're looking at King Snur, he appears to be covered in a number of different magical items of different kinds. Uh, King Snur kind of steps forward so you're here to collect the artificers do. I'm afraid that I have nothing for you. You see, I found my own uses for these materials. Of course, you may know that fire giants in the ordering are often placed by the quality of their craftsmen. But what if I, as a fire giant, am a greater craftsman than any cloud giant or storm giant could be in anything they've ever done? Well, then perhaps we might be on top. Uh, he kind of continues to step forward. I no longer have need of your guild. 
Go home and tell your masters that. Are you sure? Have you taken what you've crafted in comparison some manner of grand tournament of crafting with the Storm Giant? Or is this just your speculation? I know that they have not forged as I have. Uh, and as he kind of steps off the platform, his feet just kind of walk on air. Uh, and you see he's floating on boots of, uh, you see he's floating on boots of levitation. Do you have a number of magical items? Um. Did you forge them all? Indeed, I have. Do you have Artificer class levels, too? <laughs> um, <laughs> he looks at you. Perhaps you should see for yourself. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Apparently, oh I was not oh, ready for this. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. None of us were ready for this. <laughs> what happens when oh, his immovable boy. objects meets an immovable object? <laughs> <laughs> None of us wish to fight, can you tell, by our terrible initiative? Um, These guards and, are fucking ready. Uh, yeah, the guards are ready. Ish. Um, Wait, Sir disappeared from the initiative. Wait, what the hell? What was his turn before? Two. <laughs> uh, King, uh, King Snare rolled a two before? Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, and you see there are two kind of hellhounds on either side, uh, on either side of the chamber that also kind of kind of move in, into place. Uh, and as they're walking, you see their kind of bodies kind of clink and clank along the ground uh, as he realizes, how do you like my H311 hounds? Uh, as his two, uh, as his two turrets ignite. Uh, the first to act in this instance is going to be, <laughs> is going to be uh, his fire giant companions. Uh, who are going to look out, uh, and both of them kind of take their swords out. Uh, and they're wielding, it appears, not great swords, uh, but long swords. Uh, and each of them kind of looks and goes, We'll use the tools you made for us, my lord. Uh, and each of them whips out a wand. What the fuck? Uh, and oh, this one's going to uh, take a fire uh, right over at um is is gonna fire right over at you uh hob uh, i need you to make me a dexterity saving throw uh as he fires a lightning bolt at you from his wand of lightning bolts oh jeez well I it's, a DC, it's, a, it's a dc 15. well i got yeah. a 24. <laughs> uh and the other one uh i need you to make me a wisdom saving throw uh malshira Could have been dexterity. Oof. Um, that's also not gonna. That's not gonna quite do it. Uh, as you watch Malashira, uh, all of a sudden her form kind of shifts and shrinks down as you as you have been transformed into what appears to be a small fire beetle or a giant fire beetle, as it were, as you've been polymorphed by their wand of polymorph. Uh, um, we are totally boned. <laughs> um, and that's all for their turns, uh, as they have used their wands, uh, Hub. Those are some nice boots, but mine are better, as I use my winged boots! Oh, wonderful! <laughs> you, rise, you rise to meet King Snur. King Snur is currently, uh, a bit off the ground. Uh, he's about 20 feet up right now. And I have another little surprise for you, Snur. I reach into my pack, and I pull out a black bottle and uncork it. <laughs> Oh God! I pull out an free bottle. In, that sounds intimidating. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! <I'm> so <laughs> mad, lad. <laughs> Any very rare item, Pete. That's what I said. All right. What am I rolling? A D one hundred. 
Uh, I don't know how that works, but I think I know what it does. All right, I get Nefridi who is going to help me out for an hour. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, do you? I'll get you that stat block. Hold on a second. I am the genie of the lamp. <laughs> I am the genie of the bottle. Um. Wow, you actually created that? Oh, oh no, I found this. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, just getting you in a freedy in one second. Didn't know I'd need that. Um, what, cause why not? <laughs> yeah, weird. <laughs> need a freedy. Uh, there's an Afridi here. I'll get you He's control. My bro! I'll get you control over that Afridi now. Oh, Pete, I also take out my Afridi. <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> Wait, uh, it's you too? <coughs> Crazy, right? What, what was your very rare item, Jeremy? Or have you not used it yet? I took a rare item. I took the Shield of Missile Attraction. Oh, yeah, of course. My whole shtick, which really has not been very applicable. Um, all right, do you have the... Wait, I... It's not in my uh, sheet yet. Hold on a second. We're working on it. Um, spectator. Sorry about this, guys. I didn't know I needed to have this prepared. Um, oh, don't worry about the spectator. It's fine. Uh, all right, great. Um, you should now have it. Okay. Can you control uh, the guy? Yeah, it looks like. Okay, great. Um, have him roll initiative, I guess. All right. Uh, initiative. Oop, he's rolling to you, but you got a 20. Uh, you can change that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Roll, uh, re-roll in public because always the rule. Uh, four. That's he goes immediately. Oh, that's wait, the, that's was, the best case clicking. scenario. All right. Um, so four. Hello, three D. Get him. <laughs> uh, oh, it looks like I somehow got skipped in all the show. Yeah, hold on a second. I don't know how this happened. All right. So, yep, Juggernaut, it's you. Okay. I will... Uh, King Snur looks and goes, Quite some magic! I'm going to cast haste upon myself. Okay. And uh, Snur's right there. Yep, he's a little bit above you. Okay. Which one casted Polymorph? Uh, the purple one. The one with the purple dot. Okay. How tough are fire beetles? How big is he? Um, the medium creature, or a, sm a small creature, rather. Don't worry about this boy. I have a vague plan. No, I'm going to attack the fire beetle. Um, I think that will give him a better chance of becoming him again than trying to make a, uh, a watchmahoos it make a save. Um... That is a cool idea. Uh, go ahead and swing away. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. You take five points of damage after the the, uh, the four. Uh, that's basically what they were planning on doing, Dia. Um, you take five points of damage uh, after the four that gets carried over from your fire beetle health, uh, and you are back to being you. Uh, and the fire giant kind of goes, "Darn it!" All right. That's it. Then I will stand right where I am still. No. Nice play. Um, all right, you're just going to hold ground? Yep. That's all I got, because I cast an action for haste, and uh, um, I just used the bonus action. Oh, wait, action. no, Hob already went? Oh, I haven't used the bonus action, actually. I don't think I have yeah, one. You're 3D. You're 3D. Uh, he, will, he will engage with the king. <laughs> all right. Uh, have him go ahead and make some attack rolls. Uh, I don't think he has advantage, but I don't know. Uh, I don't think he would, uh, for any reason. Um, and unfortunately, uh, a 22 is just going to miss. Oh, no. <laughs> he is an artificer. <laughs> we got a... He's not a warforged. <laughs> no, he's not that. Uh, he's got a... Uh, he got a fight ahead of you. Um... 
Anything else that the Afridi can do? Uh, no. All right, Malashira. Uh, I will start this off joining the bandwagon and uh, also hasting myself. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Haste that spicy spell. And with that, I shall. I don't like the purple guy, so I'm gonna skedaddle on over to him, and I'm gonna hit the purple guy. One. Just don't forget the lightning bolts. So you don't want to stay in a total line. Really funny ah, that is a good idea. Cha cha, and I shall <laughs> hit this boy. <laughs> At least he's I now in the line too. Slightly. Uh, 21 is going to hit. Roll damage on that. Bingo. Uh, all right. And I will bonus action ask for uh, Delilah to kiss my mace wound better as she will do so using one of her three alchemist sounds. Nice. To get 12 temp HP. Uh, Delilah reaches down and, and just as a light peck from the gemstone fairy that you've created that follows you around, uh, and you are restored. Or, it bolstered, I guess, yeah. Uh, anything else on your turn, Malshira? Cast haste, haste action, bonus action, move stuff. Yep, that's all I got. Fair enough. Uh, King Snur is going to look down, um, he's gonna look down at you, uh, and strike out, uh, He's going to strike out with his uh, longsword as he swings down at you. Boop, boop. At who? Uh, at, at you, uh, Juggernaut. Okay. Not the Afridi? Oh. Um, oh, yeah, that's probably a good point. Yeah, he'll go for the Afridi. <clears throat> All right. Longsword uh, is going to hit, I assume, for 15 plus no fire damage, as the Afridi is also yeah, a... Yeah, this is going to be a, a fight of no fire damage. Uh, and then another 19 to the Afridi. Oof. Sorry, Afridi. Uh, as he lands a couple of big hits on the Afridi, uh, and then... I am the genie of the lamp! <laughs> uh, that is all, I think, for King Snur's turn, actually, at this time. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, he's gonna use a bonus... What am I talking about? He's gonna use a bonus action and command his turrets. Uh, his two flamethrower turrets. Um, you see they kind of step over... Do doom. Uh, I need you to make me a dex save. Um, both of, uh, both Malashira and, uh, Juggernaut. I need you guys to make me dex saves. Juggernaut throws his shield out before him. As does Malashira. Oh, do you also have the shield master fate? Are you kidding me? Heck yeah. Plus no two shield. <laughs> oh my god, you two monsters. Uh, Alright, sorry, I accidentally rolled twice because it wasn't showing up. Uh, you, uh... Got the exact same roll. That's really that weird. Pretty... <laughs> Dang. Roll 20. That is pretty weird. Uh, since... <laughs> uh, you're gonna take half damage, uh, or are you gonna use your reaction to take no damage? Oh, right, does it take my reaction? Yeah. It yeah. does. Uh, and you take the full four points of fire damage, uh, Malashira. Ah, rip. Uh, no, I'll suffer the four damage. I'll take the, sorry, the two damage. Uh, yeah, you take two points of fire damage uh, as the flame jets uh, course out towards you, uh, as these robotic hellhounds uh, come up and, and kind of growl at you. Uh, and that's all for... Well, I gotta roll my... Uh... Oh, you're concentrating on haste. Yeah, I guess you do need to do that as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, it's, po it's possible for you to fail, I think, right? Yeah, yeah I have more caster, so it's very, very hard. Uh, technically possible. Uh, that brings us to the top of the initiative, uh, and at this point, he's just going to step to right here and just fire another lightning bolt right down this line, ignoring his own brother. Uh, um, which is a little rude, I think, to say the least. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and cast this at uh, fifth level. Is it just going like right down here? Yep. Ouch. Uh, dexterity saving throw. Oh no, you're fairy! No, not Delilah! Oh no, the Afridi. 
Uh, yeah, every, every everything's got to make deck saves, including the other fire giant. Uh, um, magic resistance. Who's nope. going to fail? I got him. Uh, oh wait, do I have advantage for any reason? Yes, good job, Delano. I, I, I think I just have a thirteen. Oh my um, god. And uh, he's going to take the full thirty-eight points of damage. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and that's it for um, that fire oh, giant's turn. What was the DC? Uh, 15. Yeah, I take the full 38 points of lightning damage. Ooh, I didn't know that's, that was possible. This is very bad now, that boys. Is, that's not good for you. No, we're um, stunned. We're good. Woo! Um, Woo! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> um... And the Afridi took that damage as well. A whole bunch of people take a whole bunch of lightning damage. Uh, and then the other fire giant isn't actually going to bother uh, with the Wand of Polymorph at the moment. Um, actually, you know what? He's going to... Uh, he's going to ready an... Uh, nope, he's going to attack. He's going to attack down at you, Malashira. Uh, make two swings with his great sword at you. Or, I'm sorry, his long sword. Uh, it's the incorrect damage. I have the old fire oh, giant the 22 here. just barely hits. Um... It's a 23 and a 24. Just the 24. My oh, okay. Oh, okay, things. I'm with you. Um, so that's going to be... Uh, let me correct Ooh, that I damage. I just barely succeed on that. Uh, let me correct that damage. My apologies. Um, shouldn't have been quite so high. This is the actual damage of that. 20 points of slashing damage. Oof. Um... All right, uh, and that's for the all for the giant's turn, Juggernaut. Okay, so can I, hey, since I'm hasted and I have double speed, can I make that run? Um, yeah, I don't see why okay. not. If, if that's your, if that's within your speed, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you're worried, worried about some of the elevation? Off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, they're right, giant size steps, so some big jumps, but yeah. And I'm over here now. All right. You're in the pile with this guy. And we're swinging for the fences. Um, hit, hit, miss. Ooh, I don't like the miss. You sure, Pete? I'm sure. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's true. Um, That's all I got. Uh, 20, uh, 21 points of damage. All right, you stab into this fire giant twice, uh, but he looks like he's still got a lot of fight in him. Anything else on your turn, Juggernaut? Oh, you just said it's all you got. Hop. All right, I will summon my turret. <laughs> just the slow ramp uh, as you I get all of your minions us. together. Uh, the turret, uh, how, how high is the ceiling? Um, the ceiling is... Uh, 60 feet. Oh, no, it's. I think it's even higher than that. Uh, I believe it was 60 feet, if I remember from the thing All I right. had on me. Uh, I'll summon the turret, hi fly higher up, and the turret will shoot the king. <clears throat> uh, 27 hits the king. For 10 force damage. It's pushed 5 feet. Uh, whoa! Uh, he goes, err! Uh, as he's hit for 10 force damage, and the king is now taken damage. Um, anything else on your turn, Hub? I imagine that's it. I will... Yeah, I'm up. I'm up. So I'm at 60 feet. Uh, is I'm the... Uh, are you having the turret kind of, like, climb up the the little kind of, like... Yeah, it's like on the pillar. Column. Yeah, yeah, on the column. Yeah, radical. All right, cool. Uh, the Afridi? The Afridi will make his attacks at 10 foot... Oh, no, he has to move forward. Okay. Swing, swing. He's not at advantage, so those miss. Yeah, unfortunately, both of those attacks miss. Uh, the Afridi <laughs> clashes into uh, King Snur's incredibly, uh, uh, incredible armor. Um, anything else? Nope. All right, uh, Malashira. I am going to begin to make my flaming, not well, flaming, but like flurious swings with my blade, but I shall only strike the guy in front of me once as a hasted action, giving him that boop. Uh, 16, I'm assuming is... Uh, 16 is not gonna quite do it. But that's okay, because I will, in that flurry of blows, point 
my sword at the yellow fire giant, and can he please give me a wisdom saving throw? Uh, he absolutely can do this thing for you, and he will do it right now. EC 18. He's a snail. Uh, hoisted by his own petard! Uh, lightning bolt giant's a snail? Lightning bolt giant is a snail. Uh, we'll put a little marker on him that indicates that he is a snail. <laughs> uh, anything else yes. on your turn? Truly serendipitous. Uh, I shall tell Delilah to give a nice little peck on the cheek, giving her second use of Alchemist Salve, granting Juggernaut some sweet, sweet ten temporary hit points. Thanks. Um... All right. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us to King Snare, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this turret is going to step backwards, um, provoking an opportunity attack from you. Oh, of course. Of As course. King Snare kind of is moving them around with his uh, with his commands in the space, uh, Eleven actually misses the turret, uh, and the turret is. I don't going... take the turret. I don't take the opportunity attack. Okay. Um, the turret is going to breathe fire uh, in the cone at the group of you. Um, if both of you could make me dexterity saving throws. Um, yeah. Uh, it has to step back in one more, actually, uh, to do that correctly. And your um, your homunculus does not have to make one. Uh, is there out of range? Uh, and this turret is underneath King Snur at the moment. Because uh, King Snare is flying off the ground a bit. Um, all right, uh, both of you. Actually, Melshir, you fail your dexterity saving throw, um, so you are going to uh, take half, or you're going to take the full four, uh, and you're going to take half of four again, uh, Jeremy. All right. Uh, the other one um, is going to just go over uh, and taking a page out of your book, Jeremy. Uh, King Snare is going to have this uh, hellhound just breathe on the snail. Uh, as it goes over and just fire breathes on the snail, which turns back into a fire giant, and the damage doesn't care over because they're immune to it. Uh, and he is back to being a giant again. Oh, wait. Wrong thing. I killed him rather than taking away the snail. Aha, perfect! <laughs> you, you, you fall, I've <laughs> fallen killed. for your clever trap. Ah, it um, was true polymorph all along. Uh, and at this point, uh, King Snur is going to... Uh, Look down at the group of you, and what is he going to do? Um, he is Good going man. to... Uh, he's going to actually go ahead and take a look at you. Uh, you, Juggernaut. And he just kind of holds his hand out towards you, uh, and you see him light what appears to be... Um, uh, it takes to be like a small lighter that is in his hand, uh, and... Whatever he's doing, it seems to be binding to your armor, and you find your body begin to grow hotter and hotter as you've been heat metaled. That's an interesting thing that you're saying there. A manufactured metal object. Am I an object? I don't think living creatures count as objects. I would say the answer is decidedly yes, because more forged are made, uh, but if you wanna kind of, oh, I'm just lo rules lawyering you. It's all good. Yeah, if you want a rules lawyering about me, I mean, is there a thing on your person that you would define as a thing that you could? Because I mean, you're covered in like material and stuff. You're not all just that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're all good. Yeah. Um, so mean, if you want to justify, my shield would be the two big options. Yeah. Um, because he wants to get, uh, he wants to get you is the thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I know you have like a lot of like kind of attachments and stuff. So you can say it's like a part of your armor because you have like the extra heavy armor too. So I'll say it's a thing that you no, can no, like I have change. Good composite armor. Or you're no, not I using. Are you not, not using, using the big one? Armor. Oh shit! No kidding, man! You're that high without using the heavy armor? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, you're under the effects of heat metal. If you want to make a con save. Oh sure, I'm good at these. Oh, um, man. Wow. I guess I'm not. Uh, you take 13 points of fire damage. Wow. Uh, 
as this uh, magical spell has been cast upon you. Uh, and I will now roll my con saving throw. Oh, I barely succeed. Holy oh, shit. that was a pretty close one. Uh, and that's going to bring us to the two fire giants, uh, one of whom is going to continue. It's actually, uh, this one's now going to step over to here and just swing at you with its longsword. Can you fit through those there? There's pillars there. Oh, you're right. Um, but, but. And he can't reach me. Oh, he's got reach. He's oh, got you're up in the air. How high up in the air are you? I'm at the ceiling. Oh, shit, you're right. That He definitely can't reach you. Uh, he's, in that case, going to look at you and just throw a lightning bolt. Um, oh, right at me. All right, I, I see it. Right, right at you. Uh, go ahead and make me a deck save. All right. Uh, that, is, that is just enough. Oh, good. All right, we're That's right. the exact DC. So you're going to take half of 27. Uh, so you're going to take uh, 13 Ooh. points of lightning damage. Uh, and that's all for his turn. Uh, the other one is going to um, continue to beat down um, you, Malashira, uh, just swinging away with the longsword. Come at me, bruh. And he will come at you with his attacks. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, wow. So let's start the uh, haste maintenance. Um... You save haste, and you save haste. You're good. Um, oof, that is... Oof. oof. Uh, and that is all for the Fire Giant's turn, Juggernaut. Well, I'm going to keep on doing the only thing I can do, which is smack this Fire Giant <laughs> with my hammer. Uh, swing away. Where is my hammer? I'm looking at the wrong place. I am blind. Help. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to summon my turret and then hit it once with my hammer. Oh, nice. My hammer. Uh, 21 is going to hit. Roll damage. Bat. Um. And then turret. Actually, I will not summon the ballistic turret. I will summon the helimajig turret. Ooh, oh. nice. nice. And there goes my last level one spell slot to bring that turret back so instead of the ballista turret we get what, what? 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 Okay. The, def the defender turret that's good I, I like you showing off the full suite also it seems really good here actually yeah you no know, it's, it's very effective i don't know why it's showing nothing there that's it's very funky. weird um but you summon the healy turret uh, and i assume it functions as soon as it does and if it comes up before then we'll figure it out uh, anything else on your turn juggernaut uh no that should be it all right, huh? There we go, everyone. Oh, wait, why is it? Never mind. Got to figure out why the heck it's done that. Right. Oh, I will. Um... All right. I will, Everybody uh... gains. Oh, five temp each. I will cast haste <laughs> on myself. <laughs> so we're all hasty now. <laughs> Guys, we're all seeing how the how this class actually plays. Everyone has haste, and, and everyone uh... has acid splash. I will shoot the the king. No, I will shoot the guy that's got the lightning bolts. So... Um. All right. Uh, fire away. Oh wait, no, no! I only get one attack this turn, so just just the first one. Fourteen. Uh, fourteen is. Why do you only get one attack? Oh, because you. Because I used haste. Haste, yeah. yeah. Haste. Uh, uh, fourteen. Didn't you get a twenty-seven? It looks like. Yeah, I got to 27. So 14 oh, yeah. damage. Oh, 14 damage. I thought you were saying it was a 14 to hit. Okay, yeah. Uh, you hit him for 14 damage. And then my Ballista will attack him. Uh, ballista, strike. Uh, misses, unfortunately. The Force Ballista <laughs> crashes into the heavy plate armor. And then I'm the gonna go behind this pillar. Uh, good move. Um, anything else on your turn? That's it for me. The what about you, me, and Jif Ifriti? The Ifriti's turn will uh, swing around and attack this guy in the back. Okay. Uh, unless he has something... No, all of his spells are shit. Uh, going, uh, down to, going down to ground level? I, oh, I assume this could, Ifri you, the Ifriti's... The Ifriti flies, right? Oh, he can. I, I, is he, yeah, I, I assumed I, he rose up to meet King Snur, who's about oh, 20 yeah, feet off okay. the ground. 
Okay, then yeah, he'll, he'll meet up with this guy or okay. however far he has to go down. Yeah. Um, I'll put my turret on this. In his head. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely going to hit with both of those. Nice. Um, and those are going to hit for a 16 and... Uh, or he's the Marine of the Fire, so just 23. Yep. Uh, pretty good. Uh, and he's down to 125. Uh, Malashira. Oh, oh, just 125, huh? Oh, Thanks wait, I said, whoops. <laughs> whoops, the daisies. Uh, he's down to something. Uh, <laughs> Malashira, what do you want to do? Uh, let's start waylaying on the purple guy. Uh, hit him. Hit him. Nope. Oh, nope. nope. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. I will bonus action have this guy kiss it. Ah, uh, dang. 15 uh, rough rolls. Um, yeah, all right. You unleash a torrent of swings on the uh, uh, the fire giant before you, and it batters a couple of them away with the wand until you land one clean hit. Um, is that all for your turn, Melchior? Or you still have your bonus action? Oh, you already did the bonus action with the costume. Yeah, that's all? That's, that's all? all I got. All right, Snur, um, no longer being threatened by uh, Ziafriti, uh, is going to uh, fly in the air over to you uh, and is going to kind of uh, take a sword strike uh, down at you over kind of here up on the ceiling. I'll say you have uh, half cover from the pillars because it's kind of hard for him to reach through. Uh, as he swings at you with his big old sword. Ooh, I couldn't Whoa. have shielded that. Oh, jeez. Uh, nope, there's that's nothing a, I can do against that. That's a 19. Uh, the 15, I assume, just misses. Uh, but you take 27 points of damage uh, as his flaming uh, enchanted longsword uh, comes in and cuts across you. You feel intense burning. Uh, and King Snur looks at you. I told you you should have gone back to the Artificer's Guild. You've made a terrible mistake. Uh, and uh, he's going to use a bonus action. Uh, this one begins moving over to here, uh, but I don't think it can get in range of anyone. Actually, it can get in range of you, so I need um, I need Malashira to make me two deck saves, and I need both, uh, and I need you, Juggernaut, to make just one. And the turret's got to make one, right? Uh, yep, the turret's got to make one, too, and it's just got a ten. The turret rolled a four. Uh, the turret had 20. Um, and so that's going to be... Um, Malashiri, you... Uh, they wouldn't be con saves, they'd be deck saves. Oh, uh, you're there. Yeah, yeah, that's the, my concentration. The concentration. Um, so you're going to have take half damage from... Uh, I'm sorry, you're going to take full damage on both of those. It's DC 17. Um, and you just take the damage from the first one, Jeremy. Or I'm sorry, from the second one, so the four. Uh... Okay, so I take have no so, actual damage, so I don't actually have a save to make. Um, you're gonna use your reaction to HP. no the temp oh, HP. Oh, the oh the temp HP, nice. Yeah. And Lance, um, you've got five temp HP. I don't know how that helps you there, if at all. I think it took what six damage. Just barely, so yep. Oh, yeah. yep. Shit. For some reason, I thought it rolled a four. That was something. Oh, that's the other thing. Okay. Um. All right. In that case, Juggernaut, the turn is yours. Juggernaut sees that things are starting to go better, actually. Not over here. <laughs> um, oh, you're, yeah. you're, uh, you're still hot, though, so let me roll that heat metal. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, con save? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 19? Yeah, yeah, that'll definitely do it. DC, uh, it should be DC 17. And then I got a 22 for thing. So I take yep, four. you're good. I take four damage. Okay. Uh, I will swing twice at the fire giant here. We got to start whittling them down. Whittle, Fair enough. Whittle. Hit. Yeah, hit. Ooh. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Well. 13. Do what I can. 20, 24. I, it's not bad. And then. Uh, yeah, this one's starting to look pretty beat up. Our beloved turret of magical healing goes. And everyone. <laughs> actually, it's just it's just you my and me, Lance. Actually get 9 to 10 HP. Actually, it Actually, looks like the ooh. turret is also within 10 feet of itself, so it also gained. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty silly. The homunculus does, too. Oh, oh she does. Delightful. Um, anything else? 
No, no, it's all good. All right, Hob, you're in a precarious position. Yes, I will um, shoot Snur. All right. Hopefully. Get him. Uh, one, two, three. You, uh, you hit Snur just barely uh, with all of those, and then Snur holds up his hand and casts shield. <laughs> Uh, as you watch as uh, Snur from kind of behind him, uh, you watch as some of his armor kind of fans out uh, and blocks the incoming strike. Uh, as King Snur uh, uses his shield spell. I want to use counter steel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I will cast Sanctuary on myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good idea. Good call. Uh, I'll move behind this pillar, and then I will fly off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm we like a bird. I want to fly away. Um, Afridi? He will attack the fire giant. All right. 19? Um, 19 is going to hit. Uh, then, 15 uh, just does barely as not. So 13 uh, damage. Thirteen damage. All right. Um, that's all for the Afridi. Yep. Malashira. Oh, I have a really dumb idea. How's the giant oh. we've been bludgeoning look? Um, he's pretty beat up. He's bloodied for sure. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Giants got lots of health. We're just a bunch of kids in a pool with freaking noodles. Just, yeah, yeah, and no one's dying. Except for you, Kyle. You're dying. I'm mm -hmm. also dying. Oh, I get that. Just, just ev dying. everyone's dying. Um, well, actually, even I'm hurt pretty bad. I'm going to save my crackpot idea for later, right? And I'm just going to wail right. on purple. <laughs> All right, get him. Uh, hey. 26 and 20 both hit. Uh, roll damage on those ones. Yeah, 12. Uh, 12 points of damage. It's whittling them down. Uh, 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 uh. Takes hits. Anything else? Uh, kiss it. Um, all right, you kiss it. And Chris hits. Nice. Kiss has been getting bad luck, but you got that one. Uh, and the acid damage. Ooh, yeah, he's looking real rough at this point. Um, anything else on your turn, Malashira? That's all I got. Uh, King Snur kind of looks at you in the distance and goes, Fine, be gone with you then. Uh, and kind of steps over to here uh, and is going to uh, make a couple of uh, just strikes against the Afridi uh, from the top. With his uh, magic blade. Uh, which isn't all that good. Yeah. Uh, with the fire damage. Oh, whoa! That's a not three eights. That's, that's max damage. Uh, I was going to say, without the fire damage, it's not that much, but it is when he rolls three eights. Um, uh, the Afridi takes a total of 57 damage. Jesus. Uh, and that's all. Uh, no, King Snare is also going to uh, need both of you to make. Uh, dexterity saving throws as his two uh, turrets are going to fire uh, their heat breath on the two of you battling with this giant. Uh, DC 15. Uh, and the damage on the two respective turrets is, oh my god, two eights. Oh, I'm rolling hot right now. Uh, Alright, I'll roll mine first. Uh, uh, DC is 15, so you succeed on both. Okay. I want to take half damage on either of those. Uh, just a sec. I'm oh, sorry, no damage? No. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so this is alright. This is alright. So eight points of fire damage to you then, uh, which I don't think breaks through your temporary hit points, does it? Uh, I need to figure out what I got. Uh, oh, I see. We have nine. There. Yeah, so no, it does not. Uh, and then you take a total of 12 points of temporary hit points, Malashira, because uh, you six, uh, failed one, succeeded on the other. Oh. Wait, I did? I got two twenty twos. Oh, do you have advantage on this? Yeah. Oh, why? Nice. Oh, nice! I did not realize this. Um, anyway, you got eight points of damage as well. 
my turret failed both its saves. Uh, the turret has taken 16 points of fire damage. Uh, but is it also a bit of a low priority target? Um, this fire giant um, is going to look down at you, Juggernaut, uh, and uh, try and uh, try and polymorph you. Uh, you should make me a wisdom saving throw. Gentlemen, I just want to say it's been a pleasure playing with you. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, Juggernaut, you turn into a beetle, uh, and this fire giant calls up, Get him, he's a, get him, he's a beetle! Uh, and the other fire giant is going to, uh, actually, he can't really wade through it, because the, the freeze in the way, there's no room for him to get to you, uh, as much as he was what he was trying to do. Um, he's going to go over to here, and he goes, I can't get him! Uh, and is just going there's to... There's a pillar there. Yeah, he can't get to it. Uh, and he's just going to send... Um, a couple more attacks. Uh, no, he's going to use his last lightning bolt uh, that he has and do a level two lightning bolt, uh, hitting both of King Snur's turrets, uh, hitting the Afriti, uh, and hitting uh, you, Juggernaut, and also hitting. Oh, thank goodness! Uh, I was worried that the polymorph. The polymorph would incapacitate me in some way. Nope, I can still concentrate. It's good. Yep. Oh no, you're good in that regard. Ooh. Um, <laughs> you you're, you're good. You're good in that regard. Uh, but when you come back, um, uh, you're having to use your fire beetle dex, unfortunately, for the save against this lightning bolt. I'm just gonna. Uh, Probably. yep. That Probably is accurate. Fail. Uh, uh, and that's gonna be the last lightning bolt. Uh, for. Uh, 34 points of damage. How much did that get soaked up by the fire beetle? Uh, four. Oh. It's only 30 points of damage. And also you have your temporary hit points. Actually, wait, he hasn't gotten your turn yet. I don't know if you had any yeah, left. Yeah, I, I don't have any temperature. I had one left. Um, your homunculus is going to need to make that save as well. Oh, you already I made am it on the of oblivion. <laughs> uh, and uh, both of the turrets need to make that save as well. Uh, well, the turret's fine. Oh, uh, no, his turrets. Snare's turrets. Oh. Uh, which they, uh, one succeeds and one fails, uh, so they're, uh, one of those turrets is actually looking pretty beat up. Uh, uh, in that case, um, Juggernaut, the turn is yours. Uh, I got a question. So, that lightning bolt, did that hit my turret too? Um, yeah. Okay. That yeah, turret is thinking. looking real bad. Yep, Mine so are uh, King Snares. Real bad. Uh, uh, we are going to gain some temp hit points. Wap. That's a good start. We are going to heal that giant. 23 hits. 11. Oh, he's just hanging on. I was afraid you would say that. Anything else on your turn? Or you still have a hasted action, right? Mm, oh, I've been forgetting that for a long time. Whoops! I, I, think, you, I think you did it last round. Uh, no, I don't think I did, but whatever. Wow. Again. Ha -ha, you, know. <laughs> you finish him off! <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, and Polymorph Giant is downed. Uh, <laughs> Alright, here I'm going, hide. <laughs> Alright, you go and duck behind the, uh, the corner. Hob. Uh, but I will try to here and shoot King Snare. Um, all right, uh, you break your sanctuary, uh, fire away. 28 uh, and uh, 29 uh, are both going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage on those. Actually, wait, can you do it? No, I can't do the thing, so go ahead and roll damage. 22. Um, Uh, 22 points of damage. Let me subtract that. Uh, yeah, Snare's gotten a couple of uh, wounds on him now. Uh, and as you hit him, he's going to make a concentration check on the heat metal. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot to have you roll the heat metal. I'll give it to you because I forgot it. Uh, Sounds good to me. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Uh, where is... 
Sorry, there's just so many stat blocks. Uh, he's going to make two con saves. Which uh, he succeeds on both. Uh, so he's still concentrating. Uh, and Hop, what else do you... Oh, you're I disappear into the night. Also, All right. before I go, my turret attacks. Uh, yep, uh, have the turret make an attack roll. It's Where going to go? attack. Oh, you're way uh, up there. Yes, it will attack, uh, I guess, no. All right. Why not? It'll push him into the pillar. <laughs> oh, Get fucked, oh, Snur. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. Uh, 15 point of force damage. 25 uh, points. 20, 25 points of force damage. Uh, and King Snur kind of gets knocked. He's on the uh, ground a little. He gets, like, pushed downwards and into the pillar uh, as he kind of, like, smashes into it. Uh, he kind of tumbles into the other fire giant a little bit, but he's still kind of hanging in the air with his magical winged boots. Uh, and you just hear from the distance as you're retreating around the corner, your turret just automatically firing, just... And as I'm retreating around the corner, I yell, one of you want to use one of those potions? And just die inside. <laughs> yeah, you do have a potion of superior healing that you picked and a up mis- earlier. And a mystery potion we might want to just, you know. And a, yeah, and a mystery potion. Ooh, and yes. uh, the Afriki uh, re-engages with Snur. All right. And does shit all. Uh, yep, that's about right. Um, Malashira. I don't know if this would run it. Oh, man. That messy, your homunculus acts immediately after you is messy. Who would have thought? I think I can do a thing. I'm pretty sure I can do a thing. Let me measure a thing. (laughs) It's one of those kinds of battles, but it's going to get a little bit technical here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run here, and as I run, I'm going to undo one of the straps on my belt and just leave it dangling open for reasons. Okay. And okay. Uh, Snare is levitating up right now. He's not on the ground, right? Oh, yeah, he's 20 feet up. Cool. Oh, you come down. Uh, no, he's, t- he's like 10 feet up right now. He came down to hit the Ifridi before. Oh, jeez. Uh, in that case, oh, why can I move the Ifridi? Uh, scoot him so I can move. Uh, I'm just going to come down to the side then, and uh, I'm going to boop the uh, lightning bolt giant on the nose. Give him a stout little boop. Okay. And when I give him that stout little boop, uh, I'm gonna need a constitution saving. Uh, he's pretty good at this. Oh! Uh, constitution saving throw. Hey, that's a 37 necrotic damage. Uh, he's pretty good at this, but it doesn't matter when he rolls a 2. Uh, um... <laughs> And he takes, uh, oh, I almost gave that to the 3D. He takes 37 points of necrotic damage. Ooh. Uh, you watch as his skin begins to wither and kind of curl backwards. Uh, like the beautiful red of uh, the fire giant hair uh, just becomes this, like, just kind of burnt out, almost black color. Um, anything else on your turn? I haste in action, disengage, and begin to run away. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough. And... Uh, as uh, my bonus action, I will tell Delilah to make a delivery as she will come nab the superior healing potion out of my uh, pack that I left this flip open on and deliver it to uh, my boy Joker. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, King what Snur. Um, superior. Oh, Thank you. Um, uh, uh, okay. King Snur is going to... Um, swing down at the Afriti once more. Um, 84 plus 8. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, What's he attacking the Afriti? Yeah, he's attacking the Afriti. Uh, he's going to swing with his long sword. Da, 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 da. Wow. Uh, does that hit? Uh, only one of those hits. Uh, for 24 points of slashing damage. Uh, and then the other fire giant is also going to swing uh, his long, uh, his long sword at uh, the Afridi as well, uh, as they're just both trying to beat up this big genie that just appeared in the fight out of nowhere. Um, that's a 21 and a 14. I assume that 14 hit. misses. So it's another 18 on the Afridi. Afridi's looking a little bit rough as well. Uh, and then uh, King Snurs' bonus action is going to continue to 
uh, shoot fire at you guys uh, with the hellhounds, um, gets them into position once more, uh, and both of them are going to do fire blasts in a cone forward. Uh, I believe I, I'm hidden from that one. Oh, yeah, you're behind the pillar completely. Yeah. Um, so uh, just uh, malice you're there. <coughs> Don't even bother. Actually, yeah, they'll stay there. Uh, make me two deck saves. Um, you have two successes uh, in this instance, which means you're going to take uh, you know half, what? I'll, half. I'll just use my reaction to negate it. Um, you can only negate, I think, one of them, right? Ah, oh, yeah. rip. Okay, in that case, I won't use my reaction. Do you want to negate it? You know what? Uh, sure, I'll negate one just so I don't roll double net ones. Who knows? All right, so you negate the seven, and then you take uh, half of six. Uh, so you take three points of fire damage. Uh, every damage... Remember HP. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, every damage counts as we move back to Juggernaut. All right. This is going to be a bit of a messy turn. Constitution saving throw for heat metal, though. Son of a bitch. I mean, sure. <laughs> <sighs> what is it? Uh, DC 17. All right, so actually, I only took four. Sure. All right. So that didn't cut my temp HP. So there's no saves, uh, no concentration. Nice. Starting with the defender chart. All right. Uh, hey. That actually that does not improve my temp HP. So I keep my seven um, that I currently have. That was my bonus action. Hasted action. Use an object. I'm gonna drink the potion, which it says you can do for your hasted action. Fine by me. So that's what eight d four plus eight. Nice. Did Snur make a constitution Ow. save on my... Uh, yeah, he, he did. Okay. That is a rough potion. Uh, and oh. then for my action, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at 4th level on myself. There you go. Uh, you're pretty close to full, aren't you? No. Oh, fair enough. About two-thirds. Yeah, not bad. Um... And I will step back out. Oh, I'll stay where I am, actually. <laughs> I like it where I am. No, you know, I'm going to stay. I'm going to step back out. I'm going to step back out. I will take the hits from my allies, so I will move over to here. Um, very well. Um, Hub. Okay, I'm gonna use the same movement I did last time to just go over here and shoot a bunch. Uh, one, one, two, three. Uh, he's up in a hallway that you can't even see from where you are. <laughs> uh, and we'll shoot the King Snare. Uh, 28 and 29 are both gonna hit. For 21 and then fly away. Uh, and, uh, turret. Yeah, let's have the turret. It's got a good track record. Great track Jeez. record, as a matter of fact. <laughs> really good track record on the turret. Uh, 12 points of damage. Um, yeah, that's 12. He's going to take that. Uh, it's 12. Uh, so he's going to make three con saves. Um, that's uh, 3d20 all plus 10. Uh, oh, no, his heat metal ends. It's his concentration breaks. Uh, that's it. He got a plus 10. Yeah, but he rolled on that one. Yeah, that's that's actually not a regular rule unless we're playing with that house rule, which is thick. Yeah, I already said it. Cool. <laughs> it breaks concentration Woo! on heat metal. He's he's got a big plans for that concentration elsewhere anyway. Uh, oh, good. Uh, yeah. So how's that other fire giant looking? Pretty. He hasn't been hit much, right? Like he's been hit a few times. Um, he's not like yeah, he's been hit a few times. Okay. Well, funny thing about Afridis, um, they have plane shift. And unlike most uh, monsters with plane shift, they don't have to you only use it on themselves. So he's going to try and smack that son of a bitch with, with plane shift and get rid of him. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, does so, he have to hit with an attack to do that first? Yeah, he has to hit with a spell right. attack. Which I believe he does. Yeah, that'll, not, that'll, not on, that'll, not on, that'll, yeah. that'll hit. What does All he right, make? Now, he makes a charisma save. Um... It's gonna make a charisma save. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh man. They have yeah. proficiency in these. All right, so that guy's gone to probably the elemental plane of fire. Uh, he likes it there. I'm sure. <laughs> is that is that is that concentration? 
No. Oh, shit, he's just gone? Yeah. yeah, he's just gone. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, he's gone. <laughs> uh, only King Snur remains uh, in the room as he fades into nothing and disappears. <laughs> Uh, you watch as that fire giant, it just the Afri just like touches him, uh, and you see as like in the center of his body, it looks like a portal opens up and begins to swirl as the giant like spins around like, whoa, 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 and disappears. Uh, anything else for the Afri's turn? I fucking... I think that's it. Uh, Malashira. This is either going to be wonderful or terrible. Uh, I point my sword at King Snare and use my last three charges to have Tyrioli cast Polymorph on him. All right. Uh, he's going to make a, a wisdom saving throw. I actually do have a quick question. Lance, does Tyrioli concentrate, or do you have to concentrate? I'm not sure. I'm trying to pull up stuff, but I... Oh, never mind. Right, because that would be useless. This is well, a good point. Not necessarily, because I don't think it's... It doesn't actually stun you. I, haste, the haste thing makes it you can't take action. It does not incapacitate you. So you can, I think you can still concentrate well under the effects of haste. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can still concentrate. You can choose to end your haste and cast this polymorph if you want. And actually, Never you only mind. lose this turn, because it's the end of your next turn. That is true. However, I'm pretty sure he can hit himself with his own Goombas here and just get right out of it. So let's not do... Oh, man. I've been brewing that up in my mind for way too long. Turn him into a fire beetle. They're immune to fire. Go fire okay. turn. I think so. They're actually not. Son of a... Yeah, I don't think yeah, there's don't any, any beast that's immune to fire. Yeah, uh, the, I think the only beast with any... Res Actually, no, I think even winter wolves are considered monstrosities. Anything that has anything like that is a monstrosity. Okay. I I thought this was such a good plan. Uh, I'm going for all reliable. I'm just going to ask this plan. All right. Uh, King Snur will make a dexterity saving throw. Uh... Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, which he succeeds. Um, anything else on your turn, Lance? There is a beast with fire resistance. Oh, what is it? The stench cow. What the f hell is that? <laughs> you don't know that the stench cow exists. Because there's... <laughs> It, it, just there's no way you knew this thing because you didn't know it. These orange and green misshapen bison are native to the <laughs> plane. What the hell? Oh, um. Oh, Lord. Uh, what else? Uh, what else on your turn, uh, Lance? Uh, I guess I'll just throw a dagger at him. Um, <laughs> fair enough. All right, throw away. Uh, Hi ya! Oh my God. <laughs> um. 28 hits. <laughs> Nothing, he can't, can't even shield it. <laughs> Roll damage for five points of piercing damage. Uh, yeah, yeah, he shield a 28? What a loser. <laughs> yeah, what a bad character. Um, anything else? Uh, I will have Delilah send him a sweet kiss. Oh my uh, god. Uh, he'll just take that damage. Uh, that hits. Uh, oh, oh. Um, Alright. Yeah, King Snare is starting to look like some, see some serious wear and tear. Uh, and he's going to try and... Um, actually, King Snur is going to... Um, on his turn, you see King Snur disappear. He, oh. just, he just leaves reality. Does he leave uh, reality, or...? You do not know what happens, but he's no longer there. Okay, so True Sight wouldn't see him. Um... Oh, that's a great question, uh, and we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that when it gets to the person who has True Sight's turn. Uh, juggernaut. Okay. So I'm feeling a lot better now. Who has True Sight? That me. Oh. <laughs> Haste. 
I mean, Lance. I'm sorry, he still has a, I'm sorry, he still has a bonus action, I forgot. Um, Lance, can you make me, uh, actually, uh, they're going to step back and provoke an opportunity attack so they can get both of you guys. <laughs> actually, no, they won't be able to get both of you guys, that's a weird angle. Uh, so they'll just go both of them at you. Malachir, make me two deck saves. Uh, succeed uh, and succeed, so you will take half of this 2d8 damage. Cool. Uh, I will use my reaction to not take the other. You just take so one take one minute. point of fire damage. Uh, in that case, uh, now Juggernaut. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. So I will take out my. Uh, I will spin my hand around, and my mace will splash acid onto those turrets again. Um. All, uh, all right. Um, turrets are going to make dex save. Um, boop, boop. Plus zero. Yeah, they just have nothing to it. Um, 12 to this one. Uh, and 18 to the second. Wow, yeah, that second turret is looking uh, pretty fucking beat up. It's almost done. Tasted action. Gonna punch it. Uh, uh, missed, 14 misses, unfortunately. Yeah, bah, yikes. Um, that all for you? Um, bonus action. We're gonna use a turret. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Boop. All right, that's 12 temp HP lance. Hey, that's better than what I got. Yeah, same here. Um. And I guess actually I'll move back up to you. Well, I would fly down, not see snare. Yep, you fly out, snare is gone. You assume victory. No. <laughs> fly back, uh, cast Sanctuary. And... <laughs> uh, and... Uh, ready an attack in case he shows up. Um, all right, the Afriti, uh, gonna attack like a turret or something? Does he well, I mean, see anything? Uh, he doesn't have blind uh, sight. No, he doesn't, he doesn't see anything. The, well, you know what? Two can play at this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Afriti turns invisible. <laughs> um... And uh, Malashira, uh, your sword kind of speaks to you uh, and goes, What? You you cannot see him. He's right there in the ethereal plane. Uh, and he's just where he was. Uh, he's just in the ethereal plane. Aha. As it seems he's cast. Uh, spell. Uh, yeah, it seems he has cast Blink on himself. Did, did you roll? Oh yeah, I didn't. I just didn't roll it in real life. I just have it nice next to me because I didn't want you guys to know it was blink before you knew it was blink. Mm. Well, <laughs> yell out, Juggernaut! Just like how oh, I moved the Rakshasa oh. out of the room because I realized that would have been a giveaway if you walked into the room and there was a Rakshasa hey, we know icon. We the Rakshasa instantly. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't. I set it up to be so. Um, what are you gonna do, I appreciate Lance? Appreciate that, though. Yeah, of course. I will. Live adventurously. I'm gonna drink the mystery potion, that hella dummy thick potion. Uh, you drink uh this potion and it like it hurts to swallow. It's like so, uh, it's so thick. Uh, and as you're kind of like pouring it down, uh, you suddenly you start to feel your skin harden uh, as you've drank in a potion of invulnerability. You have resistance to all damage. Oh, okay. We'll okay, yeah, I'll take that. God as damn. A, a good bonus action. Uh, what else on your turn? Uh, I shall proceed forth. I don't know if turrets get attacks of opportunity, but I shall proceed forth to uh, wait and hold my primary action to swing my beautiful, beautiful sword when this boy pops back. Uh, to, to attack him when he comes back. Uh, and as uh, King, Snur, uh, King Snur kind of returns... Uh, and he returns uh, a little King bit. Actually. returns. Uh, he kind of like uh, is he's moving a little bit in the ethereal plane, uh, 
per his blink spell, but you kind of were moving to a place where you knew he would arrive uh, as he wanted to go here. Uh, and as he comes back, he's swinging at the Afridi, uh, but he's shocked, to, or actually the Afridi's visible. So he's shocked to realize that you already knew where he's going to be, uh, and he swings uh, down at you in this case. Uh, but go ahead and make your ready to action attack against him. Watch out! Um, the, uh, you can only do one attack as a ready to action, unfortunately. Uh, oh, I was but, but, uh, and the, actually the 17 misses. Uh, and he is going to whip down hey. and, and, uh, and attack you with his big weapon, uh, that is a longsword. Oh, he definitely hits me, but, uh, he also gets that sweet critical kiss. Um... Actually, don't think you can do the ready the kiss action either, unfortunately, because uh, you can only because that's a bonus. Because, because the creature, no, it's a bonus action to command the. Uh, oh, awesome! Yeah, the, yeah, uh, that yeah, weird. Michael, Michael does go on his own turn. Nope, that makes sense to me. Uh, and he's going to make a Constitution saving throw, uh, which he succeeds, uh, and. Uh, yeah, so you suffer half of a big amount of damage, uh, and that is 39 points of uh, a mix of slashing and fire, uh, and then another, oh my god. Uh, Shit ton. Uh, 48 uh, plus an extra 12, another 50. Uh, that's a total of uh, 89 damage. I think I did that right. Uh, 89 so points of damage. 44 damage. 44 points of damage. 44, you say? Yes. Oh, I was so sure I had just a bit more let me double check. Ah uh, oh no. Oh no. You should have had twelve temp HP. Yep, nope. I'm down. Oof. Uh yeah, um Snur is starting to look pretty rough, uh, but you see your ally Mel Shira. Down by? Uh go down. Because technically it's forty two damage. Because you had two odd numbers. Oh. Well, I think our. I think oh, it's going to be 40. 49. Then it'd be 43, wouldn't it? Because one of them, it was already odd, so it'd only be one more. So it'd be 43. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be 43. That's right. No, it can't be 43 damage. It can never be an odd number if you're taking half. Well, yes, it can. I'm dumb. Never mind. 43. Well, that was late. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I think I think that's got you. You're you downed on this one, uh, but uh, he also does take that full kiss damage. Uh, let me get that on there uh, for eleven. Yeah, and he's looking pretty beat up at this point. Um, not like on death's door, but heavily weakened. Uh, mm. And King Snare is going to use bonus action. Uh, Juggernaut, make me two saves against the decks. I don't wanna. <laughs> Fair enough. Never mind. All right. Uh, and at the I end of it, choose to use my reaction to, <laughs> to have one of them. All right. <laughs> take, or the you zero take, one of them, Pete. Yeah, I'm only taking three. You take three, uh, and then he blinks out of existence once more. Oh. Gun, um, son of a gun. Um, fire giants are gone. Juggernaut. I will use my action to destroy these stupid turrets. <laughs> All right, one of them is in, has barely been touched, but one of them is really bad. Um, they're gonna make two dexterity saving throws. <laughs> uh, that's a fail and a fail. Um, actually, that's uh -huh. not a, that's not enough to bring down the really low one, but it's teetering on the brink of death. Uh, and uh, the other one's starting to look pretty beat up. Okay. Now, Pete, I can use my hasted action to use an object. Actually, no, this is dumb. I'm just going to hit it with my hammer. Yep, uh, you finish it off. Uh, or I assume, roll damage. Yeah, yeah it's gone. Uh, you uh, crush it. Uh, the hellhound kind of roars uh, in a, uh, a fairly realistic howl uh, and then breaks into a bunch of pieces. Uh, All right, it's 11 temp HP now, Lance. He's still unconscious. Oh. But I'm unconscious with 11 temp HP, which I think I might affect death or something. Yeah. Uh huh. That would have been a much better use of my action than acid splashing. Uh, I yell, uh, Luigi! 
<laughs> Where did she gotta go? He keeps disappearing. I you hmm. just blink. All right, I'll wait there and ready my attack when I see snare. All right, uh, you ready to attack? Um, the Afriti. I, I mean, I guess he readies an attack. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, Malashir, I need you to make me a death save. Oof. You have w one failure. Uh, as King Snur returns, he gets hit with a bunch of attacks. Or attacked, at least. Die, Snur. Vile giant. Oh my god! These rolls! 12. 12 points uh, of damage. And uh, then Diafriti appears out of nowhere. He has advantage. Uh, oh, wait, so, so he has advantage. Oh, wait, he has oh. advantage. A 24 oh. uh, would hit, um, but he is actually going to shield this one. <laughs> he can't, because it's not a target that he can see. Oh! oh. That's, a, that's an obscure rule, Jeremy. Uh, this props... is my old 40 rule flaring! Yeah. <laughs> uh, props, props to you on that one. That that was some good rules lawyering right there. It's not even lawyering, it's just correct. Um uh, yeah, so he takes the uh, he takes the damage from that as well. Another nine points of uh, slashing damage. Uh, Technically, it was the eleven. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Uh, that one that, that's that's untrue. That's patently untrue. Uh, All right, and uh, he's gonna make a couple of con saves uh, to see if he's still blinking. Blink is not, Blink is not concentration. concentration. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah what have I been doing with my life, not ever taking the spell blink? That's why you've never taken Blink. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it, usually. But it's pretty good in this situation. Uh, he's going to attack twice. <laughs> Man, what a good spell! Who's, who's he attacking? Um, he's going to attack... Uh, he's going to try and finish off the Afridi. Bop. Bop. It was lagging, but did it happen? Uh, oh. I assume it was hit. Do, those do both hit. Is the Afridi down 43? He is at 5 hit points. Oh, oh. so close! Uh, and then he's going to bonus action, command his one remaining tower, uh, and you should make a death saving throw. Uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, a dexterity saving throw, uh, Juggernaut. I used my reaction to make it zero. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no! Uh, you're still hasty to give advantage. Speak too soon. Haste gives me advantage on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't oh man, I haven't been doing that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you take one point of fire damage. Make a concentration check. I don't have to make concentration. I have ten hit points. Oh, yep, there it is. Uh, Does and stop concentration checks. Yeah, I think so. Right? I don't. I don't know. I've been assuming. I just trusted him on it. Uh, I, we've oh, been playing it that way. Oh, we've been playing it that way. It seems fine to me. Uh, but uh, Malashira, the flame jets also strike you down. Do you have another failed death saving throw? Um, Help! Fire giants are out of initiative. Juggernaut. Uh, is he still there? Um. Oh wait, he's got a blink. And the answer is probably not, because I'm good at rolling. Uh, he disappears once more. I will step to here, and then I will use my hasted action to murder my friend, and then I will revivify. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, you know what? Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, instead, you're going to get Cure Wounds for 16. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we're going to have my turret go burp, 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 burp. And then you and the Afridi and me are going to get 10 temp HP. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to walk over here and as my hasted action, hit this turret once. Uh, <laughs> you mean, just, yeah. oh, oh, just attack it, okay. That's all I got. Um, I thought you were implying that you were fixing your own turret, and I was very confused. Um, you know, just to be obnoxious, I want to be on this side of the turret, so it, it I don't know if you have, oh, you have haste, of course you can do this. I can um, go wherever I want to go. Yeah, you, you can just run. And he just ran. Uh, hop. And I I will have my turret at, at. We're gonna have some turret on turret violence. 
Yep. Oh, wait. No, I didn't know. Uh, 16 misses, unfortunately. The first time that turret misses is against the lowest AC targets. It's, it's mm. attacked. And then I will ready my attack action to attack... Snur? Snur. Uh, Freddy does the same, I assume? Um... The Afriti probably doesn't want to die. Does he have another plane shift? Nope. Um, but yes, the Afriti will already is attacked with Snur. Um, Malachia? Goodbye. I will stand up for 15 of my movement and limp away for 15 of my movement unhasted and getting a sense of what's going on with the Efreet pulling back and seeing the gleam of a crossbow bolt down the hallway, I will hold my action until every other held action goes off to do a thing. Uh, so you just basically, you're basically you going to do the thing when he comes back? Yep, but right, instead right. of holding for when he comes back, I hold for after he gets bombarded with everyone else's stuff. Basically, I hold my action for him to pop back, but I think it's, it's going to be last. Um, all right, uh, and he does so at the start of his turn. Um, he returns uh, in a slightly different position, um, as he can move ten feet away. So that's going to dodge the Afridi's attack, um, but, but not, not you, but not yours because it's ranged. Uh, and Jesus Christ, these rolls. Uh, and. Uh, Melchior, Melchior. Let's go. Wisdom save. Uh, he is not particularly good at these, but we'll see what happens. Ten. Oh! He's a snail. Uh, 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 and you watch as the mighty King Snur, he says, uh, as he kind of returns, getting ready to strike, King Snur will not be outdone by... Uh, and then he becomes a snail uh, as he shrinks down to an incredibly tiny size uh, and is right here. Um... And, and uh, uh, can he, no, he can't really, he's not smart enough to command his things anymore, I would say, uh, but he is still blinking, uh, and he disappears from this plane, this reality as a snail, uh, juggernaut. I am very confused. Where did Snur go? <laughs> Why was there a snail? I am going to... I have nothing here. For such a versatile class, I am out of gas. Uh, I'm gonna... Good to see you right on the brink. Cast. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll just fuck it. I'm just gonna, just gonna hit him? myself at third level. Oh, nice. Um... Um. Um. All right, now I'm almost at max hit points again. Well, I mean, I I'm, guess... wait, I'm not doing just that. I'm also smacking that uh, thing with my mace. Oh, I'm failing. Uh, and I am having my turret do its majigger. All right. Sorry. Yeah. All right, five, ten HP if you had less. Uh, and uh, then I will end my haste willingly because I think I'm one round away from Wait, it. Your... Oh man, you know what? The giant, the Freddy gets some of that temp HP. <laughs> yeah, I gave him 10 last round. Yeah, he is 10. Alright, he's at 10 higher. Yay. Uh... Oh. That's the end of my turn. Alright, I will. Um... I guess I'll shoot that turret. Yeah, go ahead. Do you are you in disadvantage range on that at this point? No, I don't think so. Master. Uh, oh no, I am. I am from there. Okay, hold on. Wait. I'm also gonna rule has a little cover because you're firing through like such heavy traffic and Afridi and another turret and. Okay, now I'm I'm within range. So uh, one, two, yeah, but they three. still they still hit. No issue there. Uh, roll damage on the first two. Uh, for another total of 22 points of damage. This uh, turret cannot hit other turrets. Uh, and... 
And uh, the, that's all that's me. That's, 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 that's all I am. If reading? Um, well, he will um, walk over and attack the turret. <laughs> all right. Uh, hits. Oh, you got it in one. Um, the first scimitar slash uh, strikes down uh, and shatters the uh, what remains of the turret. Um, and all that remains is King Snur, who's a snail in the ethereal plane. That sounds like D and D to me, right there. <laughs> um, Snare the snail. Uh, Malashira. I will go over to where I know the snail is, and I will basically. I don't know how long we're it's, sticking to initiative. I'll just follow the snail until it's not. Yeah, moving. it's not moving in the ethereal plane because it's just a snail, and well, it's moving a little bit, but it's moving at a literal snail pace. So. Uh, he comes back, and he's a snail on the ground uh, for a round. Uh, uh, and at this point, I'm going to just say that... Uh, how do you guys collectively finish off the snail that is King Snur? Uh, I think you guys have kind of taken the situation uh, by the horns, so to speak. I think we all just gather around the snail at some point. And yeah, the, the, the snail's still kind of blinking in and out of reality for a little bit. You guys yeah, kind of gather and... We just wait for the blink to wear off, which is about what? Yeah, it just how keeps. How long does haste? I mean, how long does this last? Whatever you did. Uh, Polymorph uh, is an hour. Yeah, <laughs> Polymorph is an hour. Lasts blink for a minute. A minute. <laughs> uh, so blink ends. He finally misses a blink, um, and uh, yeah, the blink. This, there's just a snail on the ground. That snail is King Snur. I, mean, um, I think what we do is like we have an hour. I I take like his axe or whatever, and I smash a hole in the ground, and we dig it like you know what. 10 or 15 foot deep hole in, in the rock and we put him in it and then we bury him and then <laughs> that's oh, it. Oh god. It sounds like a plan. The meat smoothie comes out of the ground. We could one-up it and wait, no, if we poured lava on it the lava would kill the snail and unharm him. Yeah, let's put him in the thing! Let's put him in the lava pit! Wait, no, well, like, no, no yeah, that won't hurt him. Fuck. I was like so excited when you were saying if that. If he can't get back up, he'll drown. Yeah, but he'll die immediately. Like, he'll become a snail immediately. Yeah, but then... Or he'll, be, how's he, he'll just pull himself out. No, but he, I, I was told it was too small for giants. Uh, and as you guys are arguing and kind of... Um, uh, and kind of speaking like this, uh, and just kind of joking around and speaking kind of just about how you want to end up uh, just kind of... Oops, wrong track. Uh, and end up just kind of killing... Lord Snare, uh, you see another fire giant walk in, uh, accompanied by two giant weasels. Uh, and it seems to be just this terrifying looking uh, female fire giant. Um, just kind of comes in and goes, Where is my husband? Um, he left. Uh, went for a walk. He decided that he had a very great thing to go show the Alchemist Commission. He was dating he Pete. Yeah, he apparently had this weird Rakshasha that he had tied up in some weird dungeon. Why don't we just bring this snail back to the Alchemy Society? Yes, we need to study the snail. Yes, let's get out of here. Um, just, wait, where are you going? Uh, as you guys open the scroll of uh, teleportation circle uh, that you guys were given to get back to the Alchemy place. Uh, oh, after... uh, we're leaving. Uh... The hospitality has been great. Uh, we're sorry to leave so quickly. Wait, we'll give this what, are these dead what are these dead bodies here? As soon as she gets attacked. anywhere near the pillars, my turret explodes and breaks the pillars. Just, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's just, <laughs> no, what is it? Uh, and uh, with that, there's a flash, uh, and you return yeah! uh, uh, to the alchemical, uh, the alchemical and artillery. Uh, Society of Research for Artificers and Tinkerers. Here is, here is Snow. He is a snail. Do what you will with him. Uh, and uh, uh, pulled the you see the leader of the artificers uh, takes over the snail. They are a dwarf. Uh, I didn't do a lot of character work on them in advance. Uh, and they say, <laughs> and they say, thank you. Uh, and with that, you've completed this adventure. You've turned King Snur into a snail, um, besting an artificer of your own kind. You collect all sorts of loot and treasure and gems uh, and magic items. And congratulations on winning with a very silly ending to this adventure. 
You say ending. I say premise. Pre uh, it was a joke. The whole thing's silly. I loved it. It was great. Thank you so much. Okay. I understand. <laughs> I, I don't fully understand. But of course, uh, thank you guys so much for playing. I hope you had fun. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun running that for you guys. How much health did he have left? Uh, he had 25. Oh, I figured it was good oh, enough to... <laughs> you, oh, you, you, yeah. you, you had him. <laughs> um, oh. And, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, we have reached the end of this. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for starters, I saw Polly Trey. I don't know if you're still hanging out, Polly Trey. Uh, donated 3,000 bits. Uh, thank you so much for the generous donation. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Uh, also, thank you so much to Reflected108, uh, who has uh, just donated 125 bits and then 100 bits uh, from Bionic Sheba. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Lance. The gems have truly rained down on us this session. Yeah, we uh, found many, many gems. Uh, <laughs> additional thank yous. Uh, thank you, Farful, playing in this uh, in one shot, playing, ho um, playing Hob, uh, for your Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, thank you for to Geek Forty uh, for following. We super appreciate that. Every little follow and any anyone who tells a, a pal about D and D time, it really does a lot for us. So thank you so much. For sure. Uh, and thank you as well to Cake Boss Four One Nine for also following. Thank you, Cake Boss. And last but certainly not least, I'm sorry, Pete. I'm taking your role. Do you want to do this? Uh, thank you, Farful Thirteen. Again. Yeah, thank you, Farful Thirteen again for subscribing with Twitch Prime. And thank you, chat, for hanging out. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Uh, and no problem, Jeremy. I mean, we had it together. Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, thanks again for playing. I, I loved all your characters. It was very fun. Uh, and how do you feel about the Artificer now that you've done it? Uh, well, the Warforge is broken. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Warforge is busted. Um, oh, yeah. No two ways about that. That particular I... build is uh, powerful. I think the Artificer, it seemed to work pretty well i have some issues with the turrets um, the turrets could be a little better the the turret like duration and the kind of action economy deal of them like summoning them in the first place there's a little bit of funkiness there once they're sure. out though and with uh, i think they're yeah. all right. well the problem is it just takes the action and they only last 10 minutes yeah if that... they lasted an hour you know the action would be reasonable i think mm. but um. Because then you'd yeah. be presumably doing it before you go into situations rather than doing it reactively. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, but it doesn't last, like, very long. Chemistry I'm saying if it, if, it was, if it was the hour. If it was the hour. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's all right, though. It's definitely weak on the damage side. There's yeah, for sure. Yeah. I built, uh, I was building this fire giant, because it's just King Snare, uh, and I made him an artificer. I gave him, I made him a 14th, <laughs> I made him a 14th level artificer so he could have the second turret, because he had two Hellhound companions. Uh, and for the record, that wasn't in Against the Giants. I changed that. But other than that, it was mostly also the piles of junk weren't in Against the Giants. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much you guys were just fighting through. As you can see, uh, there were a lot of giants in this adventure. I think they intended you to fight that huge pile of giants in the hallway. Uh, and that was like three hours of just dealing damage to giants that that would have taken. Yeah, and I think we would have crashed them overwhelmingly oh yeah, yeah. eventually you would have won because would i would have just, just been up front just being up in the front okay hold on <laughs> just explain your ac how did you get oh sure so uh my armor class let me open up my character so uh i'm a warforged uh which oh, allows God. me to take the uh, in, uh what is called integrated protection a feature of the eberron warforged which uh, I took the composite armor. I actually could have taken the heavy armor and gotten more armor class, um, but I didn't. So composite armor, which sets my armor class equal to three plus my, or 13 plus my dex modifier plus my proficiency bonus for some stupid, stupid reason. Um, Is it, so, but you said it was medium armor, so was it limited dex or? Yeah, limited dex to two. Okay. So even just like, even just with that, I have a 20 AC. Oh, Even and it was just, just then it was the just, integrated oh. armor. Okay. And then I had haste, which was a plus two to armor class, enhanced defense, which was the um, uh, it's one of the infusions that the. Uh, what did you put that has. on? 
Um, I just had it on me. Jeremy, oh, oh, that might have been cheating. Combo. Yeah, that was definitely cheating. Ah, it's debatable. Nope. Jeremy, if you put that on your shield, you if you're not an so object, much more on decks. If you're not an object for heat metal, you're not an object. But I was yeah, an yeah, object for heat metal. We ended up. Yeah, there. so it's 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 fine. Oh, yeah. But that uh, argument didn't yeah, hold in, water in retrospect. Your so argument holds no water. Shield of missile attraction. Well, okay. Any normal thing, like if I had to not have the shield of missile attraction, there wouldn't even be a discussion here. Shield of missile attraction is just a plus two shield. Could have been yeah. any shield. I'm sorry, not a plus two shield, just a, a shield plus two yeah. AC and cloak of protection plus one to AC. And that's uh, 27 there. If there anyone had cast Shield of Faith on me at any point, it would have been 29. Point is, is he had a very high armor class, uh, mm -hmm. and he also had the shield spell. Uh, King Snur had a very high armor class. Uh, everyone really did, uh, because that's one of the things that the Artificer is very good at. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, like I said, I hope you guys had some fun. Uh, I think we've definitely field tested it now, and I have a good idea of what you want out of this character. One, how to build it. Two, why you'd want to use it. Uh, what like how it fits into a party. Um, but again, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. A couple of quick uh, reminders coming up this week. Uh, Jeremy, are you doing anything on Tuesday? I'm not. Uh, I just did have one last takeaway. Uh, oh, yes, One last please. takeaway from tonight. Don't let your players play the Warforged. Oh, the yeah. The Warforged is unplayably busted. Uh, we knew that going in. <laughs> this was not a surprise that this thing was incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, Sorry, bad. Go on. I'm not doing anything on Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesday, tune in to D&D Time Talks. Don't know what we're going to talk about uh, yet, uh, but I'm sure whatever it is, it'll be fun. Uh, last week we talked about the Artificer, which is why we're doing this now. Um, Friday, Pete and Jeremy's D&D Time. As always, come in, hang out with us, play some D&D. If you're interested in joining in, uh, there's links underneath the stream about how you can get involved with our community and with just D&D Time on the whole. Um, and um, tune in on... A week from today, next Sunday, uh, we do alternating Sundays. Normally, we do homebrew content today. Today, we mix it up with the Delves. But every other Sunday, we do um, uh, every other Sunday we do Dragon Deep Water Heist. Water Deep Dragon Heist. It's locked in my head as Dragon Deep Water Heist forever because of an adventure Jeremy running D and D time. Uh, but we are playing through Water Deep Dragon Heist. Uh, I am in that game as a player. Jeremy is the DM. Uh, and Crowley is also in that game as a player. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so yes. tune into that as well. Uh, and that's all I got. Jeremy, anything else you want to announce or do related to D&D &D time stuff? No. No, I'm out. I'm spent. I got nothing. I'm very thanks tired. Ag thanks again, guys. I'm Pete. Well, thank you, Pete, for running. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. I had a blast. Like I said, I'd never run a module before. It was fun having everything already done. Um, He's Pete. And this is D&D &D Time Delves. Good night, everybody.